five, four, three, two, one. Yes! It's happening, Mike. Hello, hello. It's happening. It's happening. Give me a spot. Jeez! All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Episode one, this is Island Project. I can't believe it. The special guest, the one and only, Michael Sauer in the building. Let's go. How you doing, Michael? I'm good, bro. How are you? Everything all right? I'm good, I'm good. Chilling. I'm good. Finally managed to get this uh, podcast happening. We're just going to go through a little bit of what Island Project is. Bit of a, a bit of a baby for us, isn't it? Yeah, a man. Dream. It's, a, it's an idea that we had what, about a year ago. Long time ago. Maybe two years ago. One of the ideas now that we're. you just want to make happen, but you just kind of keep prolonging it. Mm-hmm. And we're now, now finally materializing it. And we're doing it with our special guest, Michael Sava. Thanks for having me, guys. Give me a little Thank spud, you. man. Fucking bring it in. Yes, bro. Let's go. All right, cool. So Island Project is just going to be a podcast, just chilling. It's just going to be a standard like conversation, Michael. Yeah, uh, bro. Mr. Savas. We don't want to, you know, feel comfortable. I am. Filters. Say the fuck there. you want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Talk about life. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. No P- filter. No PG. It's all good. All right, so um, what we're going to do is start off by introducing who Michael is. I mean, that's a difficult question in itself. You know what I mean? Who is Michael? And Nobody uh, knows who Michael is knows. yet. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> knows who Michael is yet, but... Uh, 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 27.3k followers do know who Michael is. Though. That's quite oh, yes. impressive uh, coming from Cyprus in itself. So it says here you are a professional sportsman, professional fighter sponsored by one championship. That is crazy. If I'm not mistaken, that's the second biggest um, fighting company other, other than UFC. Yeah, and, uh, and they're aiming to beat the UFC soon. So Okay. Mm-hmm. We're, 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 we're on a good yeah. run. Straight away, vicious. Is 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 that just uh, Muay Thai or is it also mixed martial arts? It's like mixed martial arts and Muay Thai and, and kickboxing. Okay, awesome. Oh, is it? Nice. Yeah. So it's actually like, well. It's, it's the first organization to have all three. Uh-huh. So the same night, they post everything. So how did it actually start off? Um, So basically like three years ago, Muay Thai didn't have a big platform. So it was kind of shit for fighters because there wasn't enough money. All right. So basically, we we're all just doing it, beating each other up for like maximum three thousand euros. Like, Damn. Mm-hmm. and you know, there's a lot of injuries. All that mad effort, yeah. grafting for three k. Sorry for my voice. I was from too much training. <laughs> too much. <laughs> Everyone's thinking Michael's going out party, fucking <laughs> drinking. He's just from over like his over training. That's crazy. The fact that you over train. Yeah, that's a, yeah. That's a strange word. Over train. Doesn't that have an effect on you? Do you think it's like I mean, overtraining, yeah, you can call it overtraining, but I take care of my body, so it's not really overtraining. How, how many times do you train every, every week or every day? Um, I train, so there's days I train three times a day, and there's days I train two times. Shit, okay. So I only, so Sunday's my only rest day. Sunday's ah, rest day. Recovery. Yeah. Nice. So this is rest day. <laughs> <laughs> Island Project rest day, Sunday streams. Uh, yeah, I think everyone needs, needs that one day just for your body to kind of like get back. Do you yeah. feel like a rest day is important? Yeah. yeah, it is, but it's not enough really. No. Yeah, but um, I'm just, I just try to take the most of it. I try to do a lot of stuff on Sunday. Because nice. like you're so busy doing your thing that you want that yeah, one Yeah, I just want to like zone out a bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Nice I feel so is, is that morning, lunchtime and evening training? Or? Yeah, 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 exactly. Awesome, dude. And, so and you work on different things in each session, I guess. Yeah, so yeah. there's a session where I just do boxing, strength, strength training, and then Muay Thai, obviously. So what right. does Sava do for a rest day? Like what is your <laughs> best There's days I wake up and I just, I don't know, I just want to be on the couch <laughs> um, watching Netflix. Like everyone else. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I only do that on a Sunday, so it sucks. Yeah, I'm going to do that and shit. I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's days I just want to like, I don't know. Go for a walk. Yeah. Just like a yeah. hike. Anything. Clear your mind. Yeah, Clear just head, zone way. out anything. Ah, cool. So how how old are you, man? I'm twenty two. That's crazy. That's like that's a young age. That's a yeah. young age to be actually be able to accomplish what you have accomplished. We know here you are well, as it says, a WBC world champion. Yeah. World champion. Just yeah. taking just this world. that's crazy so like what what is that championship what is that um it's one of muay thai's probably muay thai's um so before one championship it was um that was the biggest belt everyone wanted we were all chasing the wbc world title and um that's when i started i moved to thailand and um i started competing and then i got in the ranks and then that was the goal i mean 
I never knew one was going to come around. I never knew we were going to be in a cage. I never knew this whole game. I was just in love with it. I like, just wanted to chase it. Just in love with the sport. Yeah, I mean, like, it was. if you think about it, people call you dumb. Like, it's not really, there wasn't no money before one championship. Like, you're just competing because you love it. And I just had this addiction, and I just believe, like, Muay Thai someday was going to be big. So, like, where did where this originate from? Was, like, someone in your family a fighter? Did you see something that inspired you? What age did you actually even start? You just told me now you moved to Thailand, and that was a, a championship in Thailand, right? No, 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 it wasn't a championship. It's a world. It's around the world. So. Oh, really? Wow. But from Cyprus, there was no really an audience or promoters who can get you to fight someone in the ranks. Mm -hmm. how, how old were you when you moved to Thailand? 16. 16. Shit. Whoa. So yeah. you left. So you were at school and you left? I left school. I left school and moved to Thailand. Wow, man. By, by yourself? Yeah, yeah. Your mom, dad? No, no, completely alone. Just on your ones? Yeah, You're yeah. Like, fuck you, I'm going to Thailand today. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm not staying here no more. I need to, I need to follow my dreams. I felt, felt limited here. All I right. wanted to do more and then the lifestyle here wasn't really what I wanted to be doing. So that was 16. That was, all right, so... Uh, well, tell uh, me, go on. Yeah, so how, how yeah, did sorry, your how did your parents how did your parents react to that? Like obviously, obviously <laughs> in, in Cyprus to tell your parents like sixteen years old, I'm leaving school. Yeah, I'm going so to Thailand to train my mom, school. my mom is my actually my best friend. Damn, she's like fucking cool. She's like mumsy man. Got to take care of mumsy. Yeah, shout out to mumsy. Shout yeah, out to mumsy. Exactly. Like mom, she was like she she saw the fire in me. Like I've been competing since I was six years old. I started fighting in the nationals and everything and then um when i was 13 i turned pro when you were 13 you yeah turned pro. so when did you actually like first put on a pair of gloves um when i was six six, six and what made old. you want to put gloves on at six years old so my dad used to do karate okay, okay. Nice. and then i was never really into football i hated football mm. like i was always the one just looking a bit like i would play but I didn't really feel it. Just like, lots of jogging, innit? Yeah, I didn't I didn't <laughs> care about like I, I didn't care about like, you know, teams and all that. I was just you know, just being available there. I don't know. It was just just an and extra then, player. Yeah. So I went to karate and then I was like I didn't like it because like I ended up like you know allowed to hit the other person in karate full contact. So mm -hmm. I said to my dad, like, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. so, so karate is more hit points, like more yeah. point based, right? Yeah, so my dad was um my dad likes combat sports. Okay. Yeah. So he turned on and we were watching TV one day when I was young and um there was kickboxing. And then I was like, I wanna do this and then <laughs> we found a gym in Limassol. <laughs> I showed up and then since then, man. Just like that. I wanna do this. Every day since then. And world champion. I never yeah, I never stopped it. It was on and it was always training. In six years. So old. from six, it's been full steam ahead. Yeah. So when I was six, call. I was training two to three times a week, and then I actually hated it. Whoa. That's the funny part. I was so good at it. I was talented. I was weak, but I hated it. But it wasn't hate. I was scared. Scared of what? Like getting, getting hurt. hurt. Like getting I hurt, used yeah. to go to the gym and I was getting beaten up by girls. Like yeah. I was weak, but I was good. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so it was like weird. Man, at, at what age did they did they put you in the ring? Like either sparring six. or so, so six? You had proper I showed fights. up in the gym. Bro, that is so young, man. Six years old to That's be in the to ring. Yeah, 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 yeah. So hard six to years old. I showed up in the gym. And then three months there was some fights. Back then there were like big fights, and then the first fight always was kids. And then someone from my gym was injured, so I had to step up. And then I ended up fighting someone, and then. Yeah, I remember it to this day because back then in Cyprus, we were allowed to hit in the head. Now they're not allowed to hit someone in the head till they're 15. But were you, were you wearing like headgear? Yeah, yeah, we were, we were. Yeah. But you were allowed to hit the other guy. And I remember, and I remember when I was in there, I remember like the feeling of hitting him. I still remember it because I liked it. <laughs> it's like, like an adrenaline rush. Like, yeah, once I was, I was scared, but once, <laughs> once I went in the zone, I was like, wow, yeah. I love this shit. All right. So you kind of, like, that zone that you talk about, I think a lot of athletes that I've spoken to, not that yeah. I know, like, big athletes, like, shout out, you know, <laughs> athletes out there, but they all speak about this zone. Um, like yeah. I, I personally feel the zone when I'm, like, cutting hair. Exactly. Like when I'm cutting hair, people are like, oh, what do you think about nothing? 
I just kind of feel free. I feel comfortable. But that's why you're so good. <laughs> Thanks, man. Shout out. <laughs> my but like, nah, it's facts. <laughs> but that zone that you talk about, I think is a very powerful thing in itself. And that's what kind of gives you that energy and that kind of complete focus. If you can focus on only one thing. Imagine how many things go on in the world. You're yeah, but you can't do it with everything. You have to love the, what you're doing. Yeah, that's true. And how, you know, how, how do you get yourself in your zone? Um, is there something that you well, do that triggers? Um, when it comes to fighting, it's like you have to go through a whole bunch of emotions, and then once you're all, once you're in the moment, you kind of just click into it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but now I'm like trying to teach my brain to like get in there from before. So, like, so since I've been competing on one, like, the game changed. I mean, I used to fight in big fights, but one is a game changer. Yeah. Like, it's the big boy league. Yeah, like, but you can get up to a billion views. So, like, you know, there's a lot of eyes on you. It's like, you feel pressure. Yeah, it's crazy. And, numbers. like, yeah, and, like, th every time I fight, everyone's expecting me to, like, put on a show. Everyone's waiting a lot. So, there's a lot of pressure. And I'm still, I'm actually, I mastered it already, but it took a little while. It took two, three years to, mm -hmm. like, Master those emotions, you know. Yeah. How do you it's deal with that pressure? I mean, like, it's not only... It's it's just mental, you know. Mindset, yeah. Yeah, it's just mindset. And you think that mindset helped by fighting? Do you think that's that that helped your no, mindset? No, you know, like it's, it's life with training and fighting. Life with training. You know, like, so something can happen to you, it gives you fuel. And you channel it into your... Yeah, energy. so, like, yeah. everything that happens to me in my life, I give it to my... I go training, I put it in there. So, I turn my hate... Into uh -huh. my hustle, okay, and or pain into hustle. You know, a question on like your zone. Do you like when you're in training mode or in fighting mode? Do you bring in anger into the ring, or do you do, have you taught yourself to be calm? Nah, and fight nah, with, never with angry, never angry. So you, I'm you don't, always you don't like have aggression when you. I want to hurt him as bad as I can, but I'm not angry. So you have to be focused. And yeah, not, not yeah. Let emotions take over. Yeah, no, no, no. You're not trying to hurt him because you're angry. You're trying to hurt him because that's how you know you're going to win the fight. Yeah, success. exactly. Yeah. 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 So if if you get angry, he won. That's my opinion. I don't like getting angry. Okay. We've got a funny story about him not getting angry. So, um, <laughs> I'm lucky enough to know this wonderful human being opposite us. <laughs> and I uh, went to the UK to watch him fight, cut his hair before. And I just remember before the fight, yeah. So he was... Uh, Get, you know, I expect him to be getting psyched up. You know what I mean? Before the fight, he hasn't fought in two years. COVID, fucking COVID. Yeah. So he was behind like the stage now, calling out his name, and he's just he's so he's so calm. I'm like I'm stressing out. I'm <laughs> shitting the bricks, and like I, I should be. I'm not the one that should be stressing. It's him. I said, "How you feeling, man?" He goes, "Yeah, yeah, it's right." I'm trying to get psyched up, but I can't. I said, like, "What do you mean you can't?" He's like, "I'm just really calm." I said, "How can you be that fucking calm?" He goes, "Me, oh, because I know it's gonna be an easy win." And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, this this doesn't, this is just an obstacle that I got to go through in order to get to where I need to get to. And this guy's just in the way. So it's going to be, I'm done. Yeah, so this is kind of my, mindset, right? yeah, but this is my new mindset. I used to be a little bit of an overthinker. So, so now you're using crazy that to, to mindset. look at the long, the long journey. Nah, so, so you're the crazy, future, that is man. a crazy mindset. Like, nah, so now, now I just step in there when whoever's opposite me in the ring, I don't hate him. He's just in your way but to where you want to get way, to. So. Yeah. I'm gonna do anything to get you. I mean, he's, that's what he says to me. He's like, he's, um, he's in my way, so he's. Uh, it's just gonna be a win. It's not fucking something easy. It's just I know that I'm gonna get through him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to have that mindset to be that. Yeah, calm. because I'm. And, I and train too hard now. You know, I, I, and I. I mean this when I say it, like I'm willing to die in there to like get through him. You know, like that's because all I do is this. I mean, this is what fuels me. It's yeah. my life. Like it's your fuel. I don't like anything else. Like as a job. Yeah. Let's say. But it's not even a job. It's my life. I like, I don't know who Samus would have been if I wasn't a fighter. Mm -hmm. You know, like, everything I do is surrounded by this. Mm -hmm. Like, what I drink, what I eat, the way I live, you know, it's like, it's all surrounded it's about this. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, I don't know anything else except this. It's based on you being a stone and, cold kid. And like, and that's what I want to yeah. do anyway, so he can't stop me. Man, I mean, ov obviously that's also natural. Sick. That's like in your DNA, as for me. Yeah. But do you, ha has there been like a mentor that you have or obviously you have your coaches as well? Of but, course. And obviously your family. Yeah. Did, did they implement that sort of mm. mindset or did you adopt it by yourself? As I said, like, you know, so like my mom, she's my best friend. So um, 
my mom's a single mom, so like it's a dream Respect. to give her like the dream life, you know, like yeah. I'll do anything. So yeah. that's why I'm willing to die in there. Come back with a ribbon on the bends. Yeah, it's like it's for my mom mostly, you know, yeah. like she's probably my biggest motivation. Okay. My biggest one is my mom. So like she's your biggest fan, obviously. Yeah, so like I wanna like when when I when my mom um is settled and she's I like settled as as she can do whatever the fuck she wants anytime <laughs> anything then i'm gonna feel good and then i'll fi i'll find something else to work towards you know what i mean okay so i always set goals and then the guy in front of me can't stop me reaching them that mindset he can't stop me that's incredible that's i think it's yeah because like you know you will kill for your family right yeah yeah so like you're literally you, like when you put a goal life. when you put your goal how can someone stop you you know what i mean yeah. Yeah, but you you say like how like for you it seems simple, but for other people that might not be the case. Yeah, yeah. that's why I think like you that, stand out from the others because you're saying that and you genuinely fucking believe that. Yeah, and that's you're proving. Like, yeah, some people might just say that but can't really act on it. I think that you're extra, that. yeah, that extra like limitless percentage that you go through but in your mindset would allow you to accomplish that. And you're not when you're saying it, you're saying it with one hundred percent. Yeah, that's like, that's the focus. thing. I I don't like speaking if I don't. If I'm not 100%. Yeah, you're not going to walk the walk yeah. unless you talk talk. Yeah, right? yeah, I don't like, you know, people speak, but they don't feel it. That's like throwing blank words. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. Yeah. I don't want like, to, because look, if if I can, it's like, I'm lying to you, but I'm lying to myself too. Yeah. You know? But the, the, the point on the, like, walk, walk, the walk, talk the talk. Yeah. Uh, like, obviously in the MMA industry, there's a lot of chattering, trash yeah, yeah, talking. Yeah. Do, you, do you ever have opponents that, do a lot of trash talking or um, like they try and suck you into it and you're like you know in Muay Thai is like it's a different sport there's a lot of culture there's a lot of um, respect Honor. yeah it's not to me like MMA has just became like a fucking comedian show you know like I mean there you do have to advertise yourself yeah, you do have to like selling tickets isn't it? Just, but just be real whereas in Muay Thai like, they keep the respect the yeah honor yeah I mean is, you can talk shit if you want to, but just feel it. Yeah. You know, I don't like... In my time, I see like after fights, a lot of them get down on their knees, they bow down like... Yeah, because you know like... Yeah. Bow down to your opponent. You know, like, you know, like you're literally like giving your all to hurt him. Like you want to hit... That moment, if you could kill him, you can kill him. You would kill him. Like you're giving your all and then when it's done, it's like this love comes. It's like... The respect for each other. Yeah, you know, but if you see like... If you see two people fighting in the street, and they end up hurting each other a lot. They kind of like regret it. It's in yeah. our nature. Okay. You know what I mean? Like you calm down and then like. Once the testosterone starts bubbling yeah, up. Yeah. And you it, it almost, does it almost like create a connection with past fighters that you've had a, had a few rounds with or does it make a difference in that sense? Like, or does it create more of a rivalry for future fights with them? Um, it depends who it is. It depends, like, or how they thought you maybe. No, nah, no, nah, it's just energy. You know, I believe in energy. There's some people I just I don't like. Yeah, and they they just don't like me, yeah. and it's fair. fair. It's yeah. life. It's a lot you of people know? I don't like. Yeah, you know, you walk <laughs> in the street and you meet someone. You're like, uh, you don't hate him. You yeah. just don't vibe with him. Yeah. So it's the same with fighting. It's <laughs> like <laughs> so when you walk past some geezer and you just look at him. They give you a little <laughs> nod, and then in your head you're like, I could take him. <laughs> <laughs> I could fuck him up right now. But that's the thing, like you walk across Michael, you don't even know who Saba is. You just see this nice, polite, well mannered geezer, you're like who loves his mom. He's a top geezer. You think of him, you, th you just think he's a nice guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you see him in the club or something, you you bust his ball. Man's gonna roundhouse kick you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, "What the fuck just happened?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I like that, man. I like that about you. Like when you're in the ring, you're a different person. Exactly. And and when I'm question. in the ring, I switch. Yeah. That's the question I want to ask you. Like. How do you manage to differentiate that, like energy, power, that force, that stone cold killer kind of mindset? As because soon as you like step out of the ring, you're just like the nicest geezer. Because the guy's in my way, like we said before. Right? Yeah, he's in my way. So though. you have the ability to just kind of switch because you know what he needs. Yeah, because I know I'm gonna. I, he's, I have to get him out my way. So in in that moment when you're in the ring, you can't hear anything around you. You can't see anything around you. It's just yeah, like, it's like yeah, tunnel yeah. vision. Do you zone out? Yeah, it's what about, tunnel vision. What about like your coach? If your coach gives me like high knee, high knee. No, actually, what what I do is is I have a certain talent. Is it can be the loudest arena. Yeah, I can focus on a voice. Mm -hmm. Nice on one voice. See that that 
I was talking about this the other day. When you're in a crowd of like 500 people and someone shouts your name, you're going to turn around. Yeah. Like you have this like predisposition thing, like a, a nurturing thing, like yeah. when your mother calls your name mm-hmm. out, you're going to just turn around. Yeah. yeah. So if you've managed to focus yourself to only hearing like your coach's voice for like certain tactics, voice as well. yeah. that's when you're going to clock I'm, into. I'm yeah. too focused. Yeah. I'm 100%. Yeah. That's how I'm going to win. And then if I'm not focused, I won't win. Okay. So it's like, because he can say something that during a fight might seem impossible, but you got to do it. Okay. That's the scary thing about fighting. It's because... Your coach might shout like, your shin might be fucked up, like it's bruised. But your coach sees something, he's like, low kick. And you're thinking, fuck, if he blocks it, I'm fucked. Yeah. But you just throw it. And Is that because you got 100% faith in the coach? And that's how... Or because... You yeah, know, that's a good that, call that too, but also like, you got to trust your team, right? Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you got to risk for some stuff, you know? Yeah. And then every time you like, you've, you overcome a fear... Like every fight, you overcome a fear, and then you just become stronger, stronger. stronger. So every fight's a lesson, basically that you yeah, take on yeah. the next one and the next. Exactly. one. Exactly. That's why I moved to Thailand, like to develop this mindset. In Thailand, like they have minimum of three hundred fights. In the UFC, they do maximum fifty. So. So is that three hundred fights a year? No. Or their the whole life. The whole career. Oh, I was gonna say like. <laughs> 300 <laughs> professional fights Okay That's insane That means like That'll be only 65 days off <laughs> no, <I think laughs> Two months off Think Two about months. it If you fight once yeah. a month It's 12 <laughs> fights a year And the preparation for that is mad Man w- w- What was life like Going to Thailand From Cyprus As a 16 year old kid Like um, your daily life how, yeah. how was the transition So when I was 11 I, I travelled to Thailand For the World Championships And then So Listen from six to like 10, I was like going through phases. I didn't like Muay Thai, but it wasn't, I didn't like it. It was looking back now, it was, I was scared. Yeah, but that, what I mean is like, that is such, I don't think people understand what a young age that is. Imagine it's six to 11. You've been in your life for six years, bro. Yeah. Like how can you have that strong mindset to know that is exactly what you want to do? I know people- No, no, 40 six to 11, I was, Scared. I didn't. I didn't know yet. But even at eleven, Michael, I know people in their thirties that they don't even know what I want to do anymore. This kid, at fucking eleven. Oh yeah, eleven years old. I knew what I want. I came to Cyprus. Eleven years old. He I knew came what he wanted. when I landed in time from the airport. Wow. So from that Thailand, was your... I told my mom like I'm gonna become a professional fighter. Yeah. So when you come back, when as soon as it yeah, landed. Yeah. So from eleven years old till today, I've been training nonstop. Wow. So what triggered it in Thailand in order for you to think like, this is, this is me, this is my life, yeah, this so is my calling? Yeah, so I traveled to Thailand, like, I mean, um, before Thailand, like, I've only traveled to, like, Lebanon and Greece. Well, for fights? No, 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 just, uh, yeah, for fights and for, like, a holiday in okay, okay. Egypt. So I only, be, I only went on the airplane three times and then, you know, I was, like, normal kid, normal life. And then um, went to Thailand and I don't know, I just, different world, I was fascinated and everything. And then I walked into a stadium, Lumpini Stadium it's called. Lumpini Stadium is like the main stadium of Thailand. Like like the Mecca of The Thailand. Mecca of Muay yeah. exactly. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> exactly. And then... I fucking love you, Mike. That's like... Um, <laughs> like it's what like, Mecca is. Yeah. It's a Thai championship. Nice. It's like the Thai nationals, and then w- were you with the li- like with the Cyprus national yeah, team? Yeah, yeah, or? yeah. We just went to see fights. Ah, okay. And then when I walked in there, and I felt the vibe. Yeah, it's insane. Nice. I was like, this is what I want to do. And obviously, Thailand is where this sport originated from. Yeah. So like, I'm sure everywhere you go, there's things that remind you of it. Yeah. And it's like in their culture, and it's part of like, if not their religion in itself. Yeah. So because you were surrounded by all that, do you think like that's where you felt like extra special? Because everywhere you looked, it's reminded you of what you wanted to do. And obviously being in the place of where it was born, you know, and also... No, I didn't know. I just went to Thailand for like... Oh, you didn't know it was from like Thailand? My mom just sent me to Thailand. Like my mom's main thing was just to go. She really wanted me to like see... Her main thing was like to see poverty. Okay. To like yeah. open your eyes. Yeah, so my mom yeah. told my coach, like, you know, take him, like, around Bangkok. Like, so my coach, my Cyprus coach, he took me on a boat. We were going through the Bangkok rivers. And we were seeing, like, you know, like, kids jumping in the dirty r- river. And, like, it was an eye-opener, you know, like, 
And from a young age, I'm a stick to Yeah, me. 11 years old, it was like, wow, you know, like. Humbles you as well. Yeah, yeah. It, it humbled me. Like, I think that's when I changed. It was when I saw all this poverty, you know, drinking water from what they were eating, like the flies everywhere. Like, I saw true poverty. And then it humbled me. And then I saw what Muay Thai is. And then came back to Cyprus. And then I was just like, you know, that's what I want to do. And then I don't like, I don't, I think we're spoiled here. Oh, yeah. We're all very lucky here. Yeah. And I was like, we're all spoiled. Even if someone's poor here, he's rich in Thailand. And very blessed. Yeah. Yeah. He has a roof on his head, a bottle of water, and a plate of food. Even if it's anything, you know, bread. Bread with peanut butter is food. In Thailand, you see people eating rice only. Yeah. Because it's one euro. So after seeing all that, what made you want to live there? Um, to do Muay Thai. I yeah. wanted to do the real thing. And then automatically, so go, I, go when the I struggles. walked in that stadium in Lumpini, I knew that's what I want to do, mm-hmm. is fight there. And there was, it was a stadium full, right? Yeah, 6,000 people roaring. Like, <laughs> it's insane. If you go there, it's, it's louder than one championship. One championship has like 35,000 in the arena and 6,000 people are louder. And yeah. the 35 times. Imagine what it must mean to the people as well. They must have some crazy connection it's, with that. You know, like how football is in Cyprus. Yeah. Everyone's sad if a ball on lost or IL beat, you know, like like eight hundred thousand people and like they're obsessed with the sport. Imagine Thailand what whole nation. Thirty million. Yay. They're obsessed with Muay Thai. Yeah. It's their home sport. Imagine like Cyprus having like a sport, a martial art, and then Going to school and like, is it, you is know, it, it's Muay Thai. Like, is you're like the best fighter in in Thailand. Nice. It's prestigious, you know. Is is it like a normal thing in in Thailand for kids to learn like at school? Yeah, yeah. During PE, and, like they, te- they teach you pass by schools, age. like, and there's rings in there. There's like right. school championships. Right. Well, I guess like say for example, Brazil has football, exactly, and then obviously Thailand has Muay Thai. Um, I just want to ask a quick question about Mumsy. So. Your mum must have obviously realized something about you that was so strong in order for her to actually let you yeah, go at so a young age. Because I, I hear mum, like my mum's like when I was a kid, like driving a bicycle down the road, careful, you're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> Mama's in a ring at 11. My mum was never like that. My mum was like, she always, she told me off. She used to hit me. She whooped my ass if I was a, a bad boy, but Respect. she was always sit, sit down. And she would talk to me about both sides of everything. You know, if you do this, this can happen. It's up mm. to you. And at such a young age, I was saying, things stick to you at this age. Yeah, and no, so like, you know, my mom, so she my dad, and your fight my mom and dad broke up when I was six. Okay. So, I, I, I automatically became the went, man of the house. Yeah, exactly. So, you change, you know, you change. So you knew that that was your main objective: take care, of mom's. You're the man of the house now. Do whatever. Yeah, no, only um, like. You you just kind of like, you're the only man in the house. I have a sister too. She lives in Canada. Amazing. Nice. Yeah, she left when she was 16. As she well. works in the government. <laughs> she that, lives alone. Like a pattern going on there. Yeah, like, so it's in our blood, man. And do you feel like that, that obviously core experience that you had, you grew up a lot faster than the most kids? Yeah, yeah. Did, does that make, did that make a big difference mm. when you're in the room with your opponents? Do you feel like you have a bit of an edge of, over certain people? Mm, like yeah, obviously I do, I do, in, I do. In some ways, when because you're um, I have this hunger not many people have. You know, yeah, that fire. In so you. like, I wouldn't change anything. Like everything happens for a reason. Yeah, yeah. like the days when mom, we were really, really broke. I don't, I don't regret anything. Like it's all, it's all been part of my story. So that made you who you are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you said at six years old, your parents broke up. Yeah, I mean, like that's a difficult thing to go through, no matter what age you are. Yeah, it was. So what? was the main thing that kind of held you on your path at that age. Like, it's very young again. So I, I'm just trying to understand your you know, mindset this, more than this anything. this sport, this sport. It was a sport, right? Yeah, so I used to love, my trainer, I loved him, like, my father. What's your trainer's name? Um, Giriago Christophe. Amazing, cool. Yeah, so, like, I used to be there um, every day, like, so. Was he, like, a, a, 
a male figure that like at that time yeah kind of yeah so he was me. really shouting at me i mean my i i was talking to my dad and like uh, like i used to see my trainer more than my dad yeah cool. and i was at work so i was at the gym every day so like if anything happened at school trainer would shout at me so it was kind of like he set some moral d- discipline yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah 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 and then as years were going by like they realized that no matter what they would say I wouldn't give a shit about school and I'll train harder. Okay. So like <laughs> I would never miss training. I was always I was in the gym from like I could be in the gym like all day, eight hours a day. I was like finishing eleven in the night time. Crazy. And like fuck. leaving my trainer and mom waiting for me. Like <laughs> I was I was just <laughs> an obsessed kid. And like if there was no fights, I was begging my trainer. I used to argue with my trainer, like I hated him. For not finding fights for me. Oh, wow. Yeah, so like, Ooh. if I didn't fight every month, me and him had a problem. And what age was this now? 10, 9, 8, 11, 12, 13. And man, I assume at that time you had no competition on this island. Like, I used that, to come, yeah. And so. That, that came close to you, I suppose. Yeah, I was always, I everyone saw a talent in me. But I was always this talented kid, high potential, but really weak. <laughs> But I used to compete against heavier guys, stronger guys. Older, I'm guessing, as well. Yeah, and I was just dominating everything. And I just always find a w- found a way to win. Just believed in myself. That's incredible. That's awesome, man. That That's is incredible. So you decided at 16 to move to Thailand. Why yeah. did you wait that age and not younger, not older? Was that the right age that you could go? Did you feel like it was time for you to leave the island because you weren't learning anything else more? Or what All right, so I came back when I was 11, and then um, 12 years old, I went to the World Championships. I lost in the finals. Mm-hmm. That b- built a new beast. Um, <laughs> so I uh, I wanted that, that revenge, so it was my where, only where loss. Was, where was the final? So I have 107 um, in Thailand. It was back in Thailand, yeah. Yeah, in the World Championships. So I lost in the final against Ukraine. Mm-hmm. So I have 107 amateur fights and one loss. Wow. Wait, what? Um, my amateur record is 107 and one loss. One loss. Dude. 107 <laughs> wins. Yeah, and one loss. In your amateur, 107 wins. Yeah. One loss. No, 106. 106. Yeah, don't lie to us, all right? One <laughs> loss. So try and make out like it's better. I can't lie. Is. I can't lie no more. <laughs> don't lie to me, man. I can't lie because everything's on social media <laughs> now. That's true. That's true. Zen. Yeah, but like, so um, I lost that fight and then came back. And then I just became a, a fucking animal. Like, <laughs> I hate it. I, I needed that loss. Yeah. It yeah. was like, it, tr- it, it was, I, that's when I just. It's like the last the nail trigger. in the coffin, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. And then you just like. So then I went and then I went, won the world championships next year. I won the European. I won the world again. I won the European again. Man, I'm a chair of championships. And then me and my mom, we were funding it by ourselves Mm -hmm. so and so back then it was like 2k a trip so like that was two times a year that's 4,000 euros 5,000 euros a year yeah so like and what was your mom doing as a job like she was was working in the nursery so she was a single mom raising two kids and like so and she would give me money and I would get money like you know from Christmas and we just saved it all to fight so then it became a point that I was getting tired like I was winning and then nothing was happening. Mm, yeah. So <coughs> at 13, I so I beat all the guys, you know, European World Amateur Championships at my age. So at 13, I wanted to turn pro. My dream was back then. So I used to I used to set goals that I can achieve. And back then I had this weird dream. I wanted to be the first kid, first European the youngest to to be to fight professional at a young age. Do you think that was like your first goal that you kind of set yourself as being like the youngest European champion? Yeah, it was one of yeah no no the youngest um European to compete as a pro the at youngest a young age. European to uh, what, what what weight is that? Um, I, I fought at uh yeah thirteen years old. I fought at fifty four kilos, and I fought someone from Lebanon who was nineteen. Jesus. So thirteen nineteen. So it was, was a big it? difference. Whoa. Was there like a massive difference in height as well? Obviously, to your thirteen. Nah, you, we were the same. My th- but the body, I looked like a little. 
I was 13, yeah. man. I was like... Just a little chicken nugget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chicken wing, bro. It was a chicken wing. And you fought someone at 19. 19, and I knocked him out in one round. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> in one minute. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I, was, I, was, I wasn't the first and youngest European, but I was in the... How does he feel? I was in Imagine the three. Being 19 Imagine being 19 getting knocked out. My mad. second fight as a professional was I was 14, and I fought someone who was 27. Whoa. He was Greece's he's number one fighter. You're like half his age, man. Yeah, he was Greece's number one fighter. And that was the big jump. That's when I made waves in Limassol. So the fight was at Monte Gabudo. Yeah, yeah. It was 3,000 people. And then that was the big the big wave. And you won that? Yeah, so I beat him by points. Okay. Um, Still. Was that like a turning point for you to realize like, shit, I've, I'm the real deal? Me. No. Like no? No, I was... I was. <laughs> when, when, was did you, when did you realize it? So he started that, levitating. That fight, <laughs> yeah, so that fight, he didn't really touch me. That fight, he only landed one elbow. Okay. And that elbow hurt me a lot. And then I was like, Savas, they're strong, you know, they're men. So, like, stay focused. Yeah. Don't get hit. Yeah. yeah. And then I was back in the gym the next day, every time. I was just winning. Like, I, so I beat all of Greece's best fighters from 57 to 63 kilos, Whoa. kickboxing Muay Thai. All of Greece's fighters, all the best, all the best. Top that could, that could top, compete. Top five, yeah. In the pro, and, and not you're you're like 14, 15 at this. Yeah, age. yeah, fourteen, fifteen. I was just dominating the whole division. That's crazy. And 15, 14, 15, 16. Y- you make me proud to be Cypriot. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Yeah. <laughs> well done, to you, man. That's that's incredible. And then yeah, and then I beat I beat some guys from Europe, and then and then the and then the competition was being limited. So you felt the, like you needed the, the yeah. next level. So at 16, I moved to Thailand, and then I moved for a little while. And I moved to a gym, and I just showed up. And then I also fought in the, the mm. World Championships again. I won again. I also had my first fight. You won again while you were in Thailand? Yeah, I had my first fight in Lumpini Stadium, which was my dream. Whoa. So my first fight in Thailand was in Lumpini. My dream. And then I won by knockout in round two. And the manager of the biggest gym in, in Thailand which is Pechin the Academy, which is Real Madrid of football for Muay Thai. Okay. The, I won by knockout round two. And the guy shouted, jab, left knee. And I done it. What, one of the guys from the crowd? No, the manager uh-huh. of the gym. Of the gym, shouted that to you. He shouted, jab, left knee. Once he done it, I done it. Was he in your corner? Yeah. Okay. And I knocked him out. When I done that, he offered <laughs> me a sponsorship. Okay. And so I was 16. Already, no, no much competition left in Europe. In Cyprus, no opportunities. And now you're with the big boys. Yeah, so I come to Cyprus, I come back. And then I show up at school, and then I get a letter that I, I failed the year. <laughs> I was like, really now? Like, no one's going to help me? Like, I just won a, a World Championships. I just won at Lumbini Stadium. And then I come back. And then some history teacher tells me I failed. Who, do, who like, who looks miserable. <laughs> came and gave me a piece of paper telling I failed school. I was like. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, man. I was like, all right, all right. That's all. I was in, I was just like. You weren't even there. Yeah, I was like, whatever. Of course, like if you're not going <laughs> to. So yeah, and then. Oh, you weren't I, here. Um, <laughs> so, and then a chance came for a, a big fight in England, in Manchester. Big up Manchester. Yeah. So I, I, w- I, was, I was about to close. It was like 16 and a half. So I go to England and I, w- and I fought uh, one of um, England's, actually one of Manchester's best fighters in Manchester. Yeah. And then I fought there on one of the biggest shows in Manchester. And then it was my first. F- um, so I fought professional, but I never... I was always knocking them out or or like it was a three round fight or knocking them out. It was my first five round fight. Oh wow. Is that a championship fight when it's five rounds? No, it was just four Muay Thai A class rules is like five rounds. Okay. And in England, like they follow the rules like Thailand. Okay. In Lumpini it was five rounds, but I ended in round two. Yeah. Is that is that three minute rounds? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um I dominated the guy. I put on a, a show like a ridiculous show. I gave him the biggest cut. 
Like he got 20 stitches. Oh shit. And elbow? then what? Well, elbow? Yeah, I elbowed him and then and then again I was another skinny guy finding an adult, dominating him, outschooling him. Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then that started going around and then I came back to Cyprus. And then it was like I didn't know what I was gonna do. And then I was like, fuck. And then I went to, I was going to school. And I was depressed. Cause I didn't I didn't see a reason I was there. Mm. And then I didn't have a fight for like three, four months. That must have been tough. I didn't like that. Yeah. Because I was training and then nothing was going on. And I failed the year at school for no reason. I was like, I never caused trouble. I was always too tired to even talk. Like <laughs> all I wanted to do was train. And that was true. Like yeah. all I cared about was I was dieting, making weight. And being humble enough to like, you know, be be cool at school and being at the gym. All I wanted was passing grades. So like these people at school, like your teacher stuff, did they know yeah, the they journey did. you were on? They did, they did, but it was always like, and as we get on my ten of eyes. So it's a, it's, it was a classic super <laughs> Every fucking watch. day, that's all I heard. And as we get on my ten of eyes. Yeah, look at me now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm literally like, I'm not, I don't, need any of these people no more i think people like th ev not everyone's the same there is this generic process of like oh go to school get good grades the then you go uni get good grades no but you, you know get good get job and that's what you don't my ten advice was my which basically means is my tie gonna pay you give but you a at check. the back of your mind knowing how much the guys make at Lumbini stadium you're thinking about it like and these people had no idea they had no 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 no, no. There wasn't no money though, and uh -huh. I knew it. It was like three k. You said max of fight, right? The best fighter in the world was making three thousand fight. The best fight in the world. Okay, but man, I, I assume these guys they make more money from sponsorships, or is it? Is yeah, it from yeah, the yeah. But like, it's still, it's, it's still. Think about it. Yeah, yeah, it was, no, you're, yeah. You're giving your life to this. That's yeah, and you're yeah. getting injured, and then yeah. it's nothing. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do what I want to do, and I'm, and I'm gonna make it. And then I said, my, and then I set this new goal. Goal. I'm not just gonna become the best fighter in Muay Thai. I'm gonna become the best fighter. Full stop. Yeah, full stop. And then I was like, so I started talking to my mom, my trainer, and then there were, we had no money to move to Thailand. So, you know, you needed flights. My sponsorship was, you know, come to the gym, free food, and sleep. And this was a sponsorship in Thailand. Yeah, but you need to pay your flights. Mm -hmm. You need some money to get by, yeah, cool. You know, obviously, and then we and me and my mom, we were broke. Like, fuck, what are we gonna do? Of course, you're broke. You're fucking sixteen. You're not working, are you? Yeah, and my mom's single, so it's just me and my mom, one one man army, you know. And then we were like, all right, let's see what we're gonna do. And then started thinking. And then I was going to school, training. Nothing was happening. I started telling people I wanted to go to Thailand. Nothing was going. We started saving, but. We already spent so much money on all my fights abroad that, and um, there was nothing. Uh, did the Cyprus committee not, and uh, imagine not fund guys? Your I fights? was already I was already a professional. I had already fifteen professional fights on me. Yeah, but didn't the government like help? Listen, no, no, no. So professional, like I was only making like five hundred euro, two hundred per fight. Yeah, but man, like the the, the Cyprus, <laughs> the Cyprus, like nobody gave a shit. They nobody. Didn't. You serious? Do you think Nobody no one gave, gave a shit because they didn't know about the sport or because it was something different and it wasn't just is a that, that also, but like there wasn't nobody with them enough knowledge. Or experience in... We're an yeah. island, guys. Like, for real. I feel sometimes Cyprus, it's like, you know, did you guys watch the series Lost? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. an island, like, My no one knows. That. <laughs> yeah. No one knows where it is. Like for them, and there's not a, much knowledge about it. <laughs> we're just a rock in the Mediterranean for this. And I don't want to yeah. mean it like I love this place. Yeah, of course. It's amazing. Like it's the beautiful place. Yeah, it's the best. It is. The best. It can be paradise if you know how to live here. Yeah, but like there's the limitations. Pe the people are limiting for yeah. for the younger generation. Yeah. But we're changing the game. That's what we're yeah. doing right now. We're all you're changing the barbering game. You're changing in your way. Real estate. I'm doing yeah. it mine <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then if it's not us. Who's going to change it? I think yeah. it, that does fall a big responsibility to us. And obviously having you on the show, anyone that's watching right now at a young age who's focused like you, 
is obviously really motivating for them. And that's one of the main things of Island Project. Anyone that we bring on the show, we want to kind of inspire the youth, if you exactly. might say, the, the no, younger no, no, generation. That's, that's my main concern. Okay. Who is and behind the profession? You know, that yeah, that's these like, kids can do it you know, well. like everybody tells me like, why don't you like, um, you know, be a bit more like, I don't know, like having a, like a fake ego, you know, like McGregor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's him. Yeah, I'm like kind of like, I want to be real, and I just want to, you know, I know there's a lot of younger kids who are like doing fighters, who are fighters and want to compete, and they're looking up to me and like. You need to set a good example for the. No, no, and I'm not really faking it. This is who I am. So, yeah, yeah. Mm. I just want to be real, and that my point is, I just, I just want them to look at me and be like, be yourself, go after what you want, and you will accomplish it. Yeah. It's simple. And fuck it's the, simple fuck, math. Fuck all the noise. Yeah, yeah. it's simple yeah. math. So like, don't let anyone harm do what you want, even if it's fucking ballet, man. Like, because yeah. you know what's real. best for you, man. If someone, yeah. if someone loves making coffee, and when he's making coffee, he fucking he's in the zone. I, yeah, a zone. coffee lover like me, he's. I'm gonna get coffee from him, and I'm gonna know he's the real deal. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, good because you put love into it. Yeah, exactly. Like, but, same with your work. Like, I yeah. loved, I loved Algi because like. It's 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 not just cutting hair. Exactly, yeah. like you know it. You know, yeah, like yeah. every time, like you know, this beard I have now, he's the one who transformed my look. Yeah. I told him, See, like, yeah, exactly. The <laughs> fade is like he's all and like, and ju- it's just his art. You know, I'm a bald bastard. I don't know what you lot are talking about. Bro. Yeah, like <laughs> so he's doing what he loves and look at the work. Yeah, man. So same it makes with a me. Huge yeah. difference when you love what you do. Yeah. yeah so then yeah. people like. Fuck all the noise, exactly. Fuck, fuck the noise, like. Bro, but it's the struggle that you went through that I believe kind yeah, of yeah, pushed yeah. you to that extra yeah. limit to be the person that you are. But that's because you went through the struggle. And Maybe then, that's the love for it. Yes. Yeah, so, but, but how do we make would, this younger generation to pave the way for them? Yeah, to pave the way for them. Like, I'll tell you now. So, like, for me, like, how I managed to get to Thailand, which is a big question. So I started. My, you, I used to be a. I used to watch Muay Thai fights obsessively. Every day on YouTube, because I mean, in Cyprus, you know, I already been to Thailand. I already fought in Lumpini. Yeah, I was already a professional. I already fought in Manchester. And you're back in. School. I already fought in Manchester. I was like under the best fighters in England, guys. Like I fought on the same show as Liam Harrison at 16 years old. Liam Harrison is the goat of Muay Thai in England. They got Liam Harrison. Yeah, he's a uh, the goat of Muay Thai there. That's great. Like, he paved the way for the UK. Yeah. And UK now is the, outside of Thailand, UK is the biggest Muay Thai really? scene in the world. And he also has his podcast now, which is dope. Sick. Awesome. Yeah. We'll get him on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, and then I was like, I already knew so much. You know, I seen these guys and I, I saw them, how they live. Mm. They have sponsors and I was starting to learn. Speaking up information, I was like a sponge, no ego, just a sponge. What yeah. do I need to get there? How do I achieve yeah. it? Yeah, that's what I need to do. I was just, that's what I've learned. I was just an yeah. empty sponge, and I was Taking just it feeling it. Yeah, all in YouTube. I was you doing it in training, how to clinch, how to block, training myself, and then I just, you know what? I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try to find sponsors. Okay. And then a the guy at the gym at Lumpini, he was like. You know what, Sava? I have a friend who works for a forex company, mm-hmm. and um, they came and saw me fight, and they really liked me. And they're like, "You know, I'm gonna set up a meeting for you. Just go. You never know." And then showed up at XM, and I walked in, and I was like, just basically sat down with the, with the bosses of the company and some people who are still with me to this day. Respect. Nice. Yeah, and I just. Told them my dreams and I was just, I just, I meant everything I said. That must have felt every like. single thing. So what's the name of your sponsors? XM. XM. XM Global. Yeah, XM is a uh, one of the biggest forex companies in the world. Oh wow! They're taking over everywhere too, so it's kind of combined, you know. <laughs> and you know what's amazing? The CEOs are Cypriot. Awesome, amazing. So it's, it's local, it's community you know, as well. And when I met these guys, I was inspired, man. Like. That's someone from Cyprus has managed to do something so big. We're changing right? the game, you know. I'm, yeah. gonna change the, I'm changing the fight games. They're becoming billionaires in their game. They're changing the game. 
So it's, we're all changing the game in our own way. And then they sponsored me and they were like, you know what? The guy told me, go home, pack your suitcase. And you, we, we're paying for you to leave. You're off. And I was like, I got goosebumps, man. Ooh. And you know what? What was real? I was like, I was like, all right. right. I went home and I was like, I'm going to Thailand. What's your mom? Your mom like freak out? Yeah, we were we were ready, man. We were ready on the next month. I was out. Damn. I jumped on the plane and I just left. Just leaving school, like. <laughs> man, what, yeah. what was daily life in in Thailand? Like your your training, your. So listen, guys. I showed up in Thailand, 16 years old. Put my suitcase down, and then we were sleeping. I, w- I was sleeping in dorms. Yeah. With all the fighters, okay. 30 Thais. Ah, it's all, so they're all th- there's no internationals. Nah. So you're the only, only you're the only was, kid. You're the when only I showed up out, Thai. Yeah, then when I showed up, there was one more who came after, Daniel McGowan, who's my best buddy. Respect. Yeah, Shout like out. Daniel is in England, like, I'm going to see him in two weeks. The guy's... um Daniel, yeah? Daniel McGowan, like... Shout out, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, we should get him on this podcast, like, we'll because him Definitely. He's, he's, he's like, you know, he was kind of like my rock, okay. you know, like, we even have the same injuries, kind of the same story, like, it's insane, and like... Like a Top Gun story. In yeah, way. yeah, yeah. So we're like two guys in Bangkok, like with the ties. So when I was there, actually, for two two years, he wasn't there. And I hated it. Like, I hated when he came. It was like, I fell back in love with it. Okay. Because I had a buddy, you know. Mm. It's important to go through things with someone as yeah, well. Yeah, I had no one to speak to, man. Like, to I relate was alone. To I was alone. They, was, they, did they speak any English? No, nothing. Did coach speak any English? had no money. Like, I had 100 euros a month. And that was back from XM, then, yeah? No, no. Back then, XM, XM just helped me when at the beginning. Yeah, like a starting And push. I was a big, I was very thankful. And then after six, seven months, they started helping me. But the beginning was like that. And then mom was sending me some money. And then XM helped me a bit more. And then the ball started getting, started running as I was winning. Because in Thailand, I fight every month. Every month you'd fight? Every single month I was fighting. And like, did you have a specific trainer that was assigned to you or was there like a first main two one? Y- first two years, I had no trainer. I was... First two years, no trainer. And but not, and not, n- nobody was, um, was like, they loved me. They loved me, but it was a bit like weird vibes, you know, it was like the foreigner, foreigner in the gym, you, you know? You felt like never really accepted, like... Yeah. So were you just learning of watching others obviously you knew what to do but you were just training yourself nah, how did you so this is when shit hit the fan i realized everything i knew was wrong what do you mean and i had to learn how to kick again oh really punch again footwork again how to score i didn't know nothing so think about it guys i had already 120 fights under my belt and i was doing footwork so, so you took it back to the basics. It's that big of a difference. First day at Pejindi, I done, uh, I done 500 right kicks on the back. First, first session. Day. First session. Basics. 500 kicks. Basics. What What made you realize like, okay, shit, I need, I need to bring this back to the ground. No, no, no. They, they or, just didn't they like, they just didn't like anything I was doing. Everything I was doing was wrong. <laughs> My footwork <laughs> was wrong. My punches were wrong. Everything. Imagine that, man. 125 fights later. Yeah. Jesus. So, yeah, but th- then again, that's what you mean. Like, you're going to the place where this thing originated. I was in Real Madrid, basically. Yeah. For people who, who don't know what about pitching the... It's the Real Madrid of Muay Thai. So, they want to teach you, like, their specific way because that is the right way to do it. But, yeah. But no, they, no, that is the right way. That is the, the only right way, for example. Yeah. But did they see the talent in you, of course? Yeah, because... And they just wanted they to, like, tweak it. These, what they felt was me, how humble I was. I was just, I was never like a show off. I was just, I just loved it so much that this is what I wanted to do. I was just, was obsessed with it. And then training every day, every day, every day. So they saw that in you? Yeah. They and saw then, potential? Man, I loved it, but like I was, I, I went through a depression phase after a year. I was alone, sleeping with the ties, no social life. No friends. I only had um, a small um, iPhone, which had um, it was I um, I remember uh, I got gifted um, an iPhone, the f- one of the first ones because I was over there and there was like 
Facebook, I think, just came out. <laughs> and then it was a limited resource, you know, like, to speak to family. And back then, and there was, like, not really much to do. I was broke as fuck. And then I had no money to eat foreign food. I didn't know where to go. And I was basically eating whatever they were eating. Did you learn the language? Or, um, or like, at least... I understand a lot. I can speak a lot. But I'm not fluent. Okay. It's really hard. There's a lot of dialects. So there was no one tie that actually kind of showed you the ropes. Or no, they did. They did. After two years, <laughs> I started making friends. You, you proved yourself. That to yeah, them. yeah, I got accepted, and now I'm one of them. Feeling. Like I'm one of them. Thailand is like home. Yeah, home. Do you remember like that day when it's like, okay, I've actually been accepted? Do you remember that day? Like, did it come gradually, or was it, it just came like gradually, bro? Because right? one day I was just happy. Yeah, mm. I was happy. So, like, what kind of kept you going? What kind of made you say, I don't want to come back. This is what I've got to do. I called mom a few times. I was crying. I said, mom, I yeah. want to come back. Yeah. She's like, no, you're not coming back. Respect. You're not coming back. I mean, like, I think your mom must be one of the strongest women, I think, because hearing your son cry from, like, yeah, because from across she was, the country. I, I never told her really about my... I never told her I was lonely. Yeah. I never told her I was going through weird phases. You didn't want to upset I just her. told her I was... Training was too hard, which it was, man. Yeah. It was like, bro, I was training here a lot, which was two hours a day. Whereas over there, it was like seven days a week? Six days six, a week, six seven days. hours a day. So my body was going through a ridiculous amount of, oh, man, like... Pain, suffering, but it must have been a shock bro. to the system. Yeah, and the food. You had him four hours. I was eating breakfast. I was having spicy soup with um, rice for breakfast. And raw eggs I mean, Over here you got your basuman halumin. No For <laughs> breakfast you have fucking Sandwich at school mm. And your direobita <laughs> And your chocolate milk That mommy gives you Over there is a big Glass of water With your spicy soup And two raw eggs At the side And some white rice But I, I guess you're all In the same boat In that sense With the diet yeah. And the Yeah so but they're from there Yeah so you, they, They're you more used to, used to it that, yeah. They yeah. like it It's a yeah. shock yeah. to the system Yeah, yeah it's it was definitely a shock to the system but I held on, I held on. But I mean, you might, your mom obviously believed in you so much in order for her to like make sure that you no, stayed she on knew, your path. She knew how much I wanted. Yeah, she did. Yeah. She just knew it was a phase I was going to go through. I think is it, if she said to you, okay, come back, she knew you would have regretted it one day. Yeah, and then, and then I, I started, no, so this is what was happening actually. I was also a big tall why I didn't come back. A year and a half after, I came back to Cyprus and I spent a month, my first holiday, came back i was a bit older 17 and a half different person man yeah you know yeah. you know you know 15 16 17 you're growing yeah. friends getting ready for the army yeah and i was already like competing professional came back i was like i changed i completely changed and then i saw what was going on here all the drinking all the going out no discipline Everyone was moaning about bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> bullshit, man. Yeah. 18 years old, daddy bought them a car, opened them a business and all that. Or in, You couldn't relate to them. No, nah, it's not that I I, I, I... I would do that for my kids, you know. Yeah. I'm inspired by that. Yeah. But it, I wasn't vibing around here no more. I was used to that darkness. I was in the trenches. Came back here and I was like, Different this world. is it. This is it? Yeah. No, I'm not from here. I'm going back. I need to work. I, I need to go back to my trends. Over there, you're focused because, like, there's no distractions. Like, you get up, you train, you eat your fucking spicy soup, and then that's what you got to do because that's how it's going to lead you to where you want to be. Over yeah, here, yeah, yeah. do you feel like and there's no, no, no distractions? You know what, and you're alone, and I'm doing everything alone, and you go through so much, you know, injuries. Bro, you know, it's a combat sport, and you're training every day. You're dealing with different stuff every day different battles every day and you think being back kind of slowed you down or it no it's just it humbled me mm. it humbled me like you know like i i saw where i'm at and i'm, all, I'm going to the top and i'm doing it alone and i was like it motivated me it was given i loved it like i didn't want to be around these people okay i want to be different i want to I want to fight for my dreams. I want to go after it. Strive and I want to prove, I want to prove to the people like. The doubters. No, not the doubters in necessarily like, like you have a good life. 
but learn how to humble yourself and go after your dreams. Don't forget your dreams. Mm. And then don't be spoiled. Just live life, be happy, and do what you want. And then we're all going to be happy. There's not going to be no ego after. And then that's my main, my how I live. Not many people are like that, mate. That's yeah. Incredible. So obviously, end of the day, that's kind of put you in the position that you are. Yeah. And um, it's crazy. Right, things that else I want to go on to right now. Yeah, bro. Um, just give it one Anything. second. Right. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, yeah, I just want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to Maria. Um, she done our logo uh, for the Island Project. Uh, we're going to add her like Instagram and all her details, her email. If you want to get in contact with someone to do like a sick logo. Can't wait to obviously show you guys on our Instagram and stuff. So shout out Maria, big thank you. Um, shout out to Maria. Yeah, shout out to Maria. Um, also a little thanks to Kafaz. And Stefano for letting us use uh, the inspiration for the name Island Project in itself. We want to give a little shout out to them two boys right now. Definitely get them on on the, on the show, talk about their Harleys and <laughs> just the passion that they got for them big boy bikes. Yeah. Right, cool. So, we'll definitely uh, get them on at some stage. Yeah, of course, man. We're coming for you, boys. <laughs> We're coming for you. So, like, Michael, just just um, another question that I had as a, as a maybe a bit more of a personal question, if that's all right. Yeah. So, this sport ain't that long lived. Let's be honest. Um, it's a difficult sport. There's people that get injured and like, uh, you know, might not be able to fight again or maybe there's like injuries, head injuries, stuff like that. How do you deal with that as like, as a concept of maybe, not a concept of failure, as a, as a, as a timeline? So do you have a long-term plan after this or do you not really think about that? Are you just focused in it? Wait, you said two stuff. I had a lot of stuff. Injury. <laughs> the injury is different. If, that, if you're saying if I get injured and I can't compete, or if my body, how long I can do it? Yeah. How so long like, I can do it? Like the longevity as well. The longevity is just depends on how much I take care of my body. Okay. So I'm just going to go until... Basically, I'm going to fight till... Till you can't fight no more? No, no, till there's hunger in me. Okay. When the hunger goes, I'm going to stop. What if the hunger never stops? Not gonna stop. <laughs> Never stops. I'm not gonna stop. Yeah. I love that. But it, it goes. It's a touchy yeah. subject. It I comes. mean, like a lot of people like worry about injuries or maybe like not only injuries during fighting. I mean, like long term injuries. Obviously, stuff like you that. know, there is always a plan B in your mind, but it's not really a plan B. It's just like when it shows up. I mean, I don't know. And um, let's say one day we'll have a gym here in Cyprus, so hopefully offering, you know, a place. You know, Cyprus and Greece, a place for like our boys to like, you know, make it to the big stage make it to just the by door. staying here, yeah, and offering them everything, you know. But I mean, I'm just gonna stay and just focus on one fight at a time. Okay, so like, yeah, go on. So uh, is is that something that you would have in your plans, like in the future? Obviously, you, you've spoken a lot about the youth in Cyprus and inspiring them and being yeah. an example to set up an academy in Cyprus maybe or help and train younger people? I will, I will some way, in some way help. Um, as for having um, a gym, I'm not really sure yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm too young to even think about it. Yeah, yeah of course. I'm just going with it. Just, just going, going with it life. Yeah. So that I don't even know where I'm so going to end up. I don't even think about it. That stuff don't really worry you. Cause no, really. Because I, I don't even know where I'm going to end up living, you know. Okay. Yeah. It's... Um, who knows, man? I'm in Thailand now. Can take you, man. I don't know where I'm going to be. So when are you moving back to Thailand? So I'm going to be back in Thailand in the middle of March. Middle of March. So you've yeah. been in Cyprus for how long now? Oh, man, I'm not even sure. Like maybe two years. Maybe two just years. two years coming up. So that was because of COVID. Like you, yeah. got, you got stuck here, right? Yeah. Is that true? No, I got stuck in Thailand. You got stuck in Thailand. So Thailand was really strict with the lockdowns and all that. And then I got stuck. So then they closed the airports when I came back here. And they didn't open them for a year and a half. Damn. So then, yeah, now I'm just preparing to go back. How was that? Like, how was being away, like you said before, you, like, you come over on holiday and you kind of saw, like, this wasn't for you, the place anymore and so forth, and coming back and being stuck here for a year and a half, not being able to go back, how did you deal with that? Like, how did your mindset change in order I, to be like, okay, I'm here now, I can't really go anywhere else, what have I got to do? I don't know if, if it's because I'm maturing as goes by but i was more like um it is what it is first right, of it all it is what it is but <laughs> second it was just like you know what just enjoy your home for a bit you know nice. you're young you can do stuff you can't really do in thailand 
So I just enjoyed a little bit of everything. So like now you sound like a different Sava from before. Now you sound like a Sava that's come back with experience more and understanding where he is. Yeah, but and the culture difference. But I um I knew that my batteries will get charged quick. Okay. And I'm kind of full. Right. So you ready now. to go back? Mm, yeah, I'm very ready to go back. But um, ever since my trainer came, my whole lifestyle changed. Okay. So, so when did here, your trainer come? I think it's been a, it's a year now exactly. And how did your trainer manage to get to Cyprus? Um, my sponsors brought him over. Sponsor XM. Yeah, yeah XM. Shout out XM. Shout out XM. <laughs> and um, second he's, time, he's here permanently now training with you. Um, not permanently. He's coming back with me to Thailand, but he came here to to train me. And then when he came back, I realized like, oh man, this is what I do. Yeah, I'm a fighter. Yeah, I don't live life. Man, there's something you mentioned earlier that you you it, for like three or four months you weren't fighting. Obviously now with COVID, I didn't fight for two years. Now two years. Like, how did you deal with? Because so you're, that's, that's what uh, you do, right? You're a fighter. So a, a year when I was doing a year, I didn't fight and I didn't have good training. It was whatever I was doing alone. But I was. Um, I put in my mind. Um, so my last fight in one championship, I lost. I lost against a Japanese champion. It was a close fight, but I felt I had some weaknesses. And I was really upset about them, and I was really looking forward to fixing my mistakes, like working on them. So that's what I did. I came to Cyprus. It was COVID. I had no control of it. It is what it is, and I just took advantage of um, becoming stronger and the transformation I've done in two years. You can't recognize me no more. I'm not the same. So it, it was a brilliant opportunity for you to grow. I've changed, physically and mentally I've changed well. completely, uh, yeah. not even 360, 720 yeah. in two years, which is insane. I'm the fighter I was two years ago. I could not come out in one minute. Damn. So you said to me like uh, that you do like training every single day, Sundays off, and you do like maybe three to two times a day. So how many training sessions have you completed in January, for example? No, oh, man, maybe 55 sessions. <laughs> Motherfucker, there's only 30 <laughs> days in the month. What, what, yeah, what, what is, what is your I day? mean, actually, in January, I kind of overdone it. <laughs> it was a new year, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> and I just gave it that. Like, uh, See, uh, other people be like, oh, new year, new me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go gym. And they don't start losing shit, yeah. weight. <laughs> this guy's like, new year, new me. Bang, fucking 54 <laughs> session. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. I was like, let's just upgrade it. I'm just like, let's take it to the next level. Okay. And I did. And, yeah. and I feel it now. Like, I already. I'm already even better than I was last month, so I'm just gonna keep it up. So keep where did training. you meet your trainer? Like, how did that love story? You happen? remember I was telling you for two years a bit. It was a bit weird. Uh, like the ties, yeah, yeah. Not the trainer, the ties there till I got accepted. But when he showed up in the gym, was it like just, an instant connection? Yeah, or? instant, bro. It was so natural. Yeah. First day. First day. I was the first guy he trained, and I was the only foreigner. Wow. It was like. Written in the stars, I don't know. You must have seen something. You meant to be, meant to be. And his name? Ajan Watt. Ajan Watt, big up Ajan Watt. Yeah, he's a legend. Legend, yeah. Him, he's the best coach in Muay Thai, period. Damn! And I truly believe it, guys. Well, That's a statement. Was he also a pro fighter you know, yes. in his younger days? Yeah. 400 fights. Okay. Well, and 400, 400 fights. fights. Yeah, bro, he's insane. He's not, he's not normal, you know. And people, yeah, I mean, like, the videos we post, they are cool, but like, that's just a highlight like a of what I go. Of what you guys do? Yeah, I just yeah. we even watch what we post. We just post it because we have to, mm -hmm. and you know, it's for the, for people to get motivated, and you know, for my social media, my fans. But he's I, badass. I mean, every time I see you like he's your badass. videos on social Insta oh, on social media, social Instagram, I like <laughs> on social media. It's like you're giving a hundred and ten percent every single kick. You can't with a John Why you can't. He's really strict. Yeah. Yeah, and people tell me, like, oh man, I'm watching like Michael's stories. He's fucking going in yeah. every time he's doing this. He's up in the mountains in the yeah, snow yeah, without yeah. a shirt. Like that stuff to hear back from people like must be a good feeling in itself. But don't forget, these like not only your own people in your own country, but from around the world. So to give a hundred percent every single time, like what does yeah. that take? Is that because of him? Does he shout at you if you're not? Does he feel the kick ain't as strong? Nah, on the you pad? know what? That he is strict. But he's not strict with me because he doesn't need to. Okay. I'm, he tells me to calm down. 
Oh damn! If he tells me do more, I'll do even more. What then he tells me? Okay. So he has he learned how to balance it. Psychologist so, as well at the same time. Yeah, because if he just lets me go, I'm just gonna train till I pass out. Yeah. It's just thinking of losing. I don't like it, and then I want to become champion as soon as possible. So I'm willing to do all the work that has to be done to get to be closer to what. So you're what as doing. soon as possible. Is, is this a patient game, or is it like? Whoever was hungriest will get it. Like, how do you get your opportunities to fight in the final? Do you have to, like, build your way up? or Obviously, yeah. Fight? I just have to fight all the guys. But I just want to be levels ahead the, ahead of them. So when I do compete against them, I want to show them that, you know, Savas is not is higher than these guys. So you just want to beat anyone of the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do, do you reach out to the, to the fighters? Or does the organization No, no, there's the an organization. I'm signed to one championship. Okay. I have a manager, I have a team in Thailand and you know they it's um and it's, it's just like rankings. every league, yeah. yeah. So you're signed up to one championship. Yeah. So you're an official one championship fighter. Yes. So how did that process happen? Did they contact you? So when one championship came around, yeah. um and um it was around for a few years, but only MMA. So then they came around and they done Muay Thai mm -hmm. and then they signed four guys of from my gym in Thailand. Four or five guys. And then um, after six months, man, I was like, hey, you're signing to one. We want you to go in one championship. Just like that? Yeah, and I was like, yeah, let's go. I was ready for it, you know. I, I knew it. Were you expecting it? Yeah, I was. That's I because, it. is there like scouts that watch you no, fight? No, I just... Or, like, for example, if you're a footballer, for example, I just, like some I just, scout will come I watch saw, you play. I, when, it, when I was there for the first time, I visioned it already and I just... Was gonna make it happen. You knew it was the next milestone to hit. Yeah, yeah, because my my work always makes everything happen. Yeah. So I just knew that was it. So I knew you put the work in, you're gonna get the result. Yeah, exactly. Simple. That's why I don't I don't believe in luck. That's your philosophy. Exactly. You work hard. You make your own luck. As long as you work hard enough for something, you're gonna get yeah. it. Yeah. And believe in it. Yeah, cool. Don't just say I'm gonna do it and don't don't really believe in it. Dude, so, so, see how I mean by how calm he is. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, just like one championship. Call me on. So, so chilled, man. I was like, yeah. <laughs> And, th and that's how but he's like. so humble as well. Yeah, but that's yeah. how he's like through his fights as well. That's what I mean before I was talking about your fight. You're just a very calm, you understand what you need to do. Yeah, how because to get there. I, cause I'm going to do it. That's not normal. I'm not lying to myself though. <laughs> do, you, do you think your coach has, a, has an influence on that? Like, so my coach, you my coach, daily life yeah, you. he has an influence in the aspect of I enjoy training with him. I'm always learning. Um, I love him as a guy. I love I love his style. I love, I love our bond. I love the passion. You no, know, like when there's days I'm not, you know, we do the same grueling stuff every single day. It looks cool with video and music in the background, but when it's six a.m. and you're hitting a cold bag alone and yeah. there's no music and it's just you and your trainer, and you're just basically working the same drills every day. Does that, shit, does that shit ever get boring? Or do you, do you have or to fight through the boring? I fight. I fight through it. I fight. There, you I know am bored. Lead this I am bored. I am tired sometimes. That you go through phases, mm -hmm. but I never ever cheat myself. Mm -hmm. I try to give my hundred percent each time. Man, can you can you tell us what a day looks like in Michael Savas' day? What time yeah. do you wake up? So I wake up in the morning, either six, seven in the morning, except depends on my program. This is in Cyprus at the moment. Mm -hmm. I go for a twelve kilometer run. Cash? What? <laughs> um, no, no, it's a just fast pace. No, no, fast pace run. But <laughs> incline at incline as well, or just like um um like different. There's different days. Okay. I might be in the mountains or I'm in Limassol on the beach. I saw I saw your post in the snow actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're either in the snow or on the beach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Big up Cyprus. Yeah. Cyprus, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing, you know. Like I have a lot of um, options here mm -hmm. in Thailand. I'm I train in Bangkok. It's a busy place. It's hard. It's a hard place to live in. Thirty million, I think. I don't even know how much the population is. It's wow. insane. Whatever. Yeah, but it's intense. So yeah, I wake up. I go for a run. Come home. I have my oatmeal. Straight to the Thai gym. Mm -hmm. We train Muay Thai for two, three hours. Come home, have an hour sleep. Straight to Nicosia. And I do strength training. Come home, relax, sleep, and just repeat. It's repeat. It's on repeat every day. 
So you go yeah. Nicosia back, Limso, every day training, every stop, and giving it one hundred percent every day. Does your coach know when you don't give it one hundred percent? Does that make yes. sense? He can tell. No, he knows. He knows everything about me just by holding pads. He knows how much effort I'm putting, how tired I am, if I'm running. He can touch my legs, and he knows if I ran today in the morning. So there's no cheating. <laughs> he's Gandalf, basically. Yeah. So every time I come home, he checks. <laughs> he checks. He's like. All right, we're good, we're good. You're 70% this week. I mean, he knows everything. You can't cheat. He knows if I had had a beer last night. Because my breathing's different. He knows everything. It's his life. Yes. No, no, only like, we're together so many hours, you know, so I know him as he knows me, you know, so it's, it is it is a unique bond. Yeah, you develop an unbreakable bond. Also. Me and him have probably the most unique bond in the world. I can say. Do you know if he trained anybody else before you? Yeah, he or? did, but never been as much as he is with me. Really? Is yeah. Does he train other people right now as well? Or, or in in Thailand, yeah. In Thailand. He trains two more guys who are really good. Like, when we're there, we're a family too. Mm-hmm. But now we're here because of me. And um, So your trainer left his family, his home. Everything. For you. Everything. That's crazy. That's yeah, a that Mr. Miyagi bond right there, man. That's dedication. He believes in me a lot. More than I do myself. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> and I do, and I pretty believe in myself a lot. He's just even more confident. He has no fear, this guy. Do you know where that originates from? He, You know, he's the first person I met. There's no fear in the guy. Nothing. He's like numb. And I swear. I don't even know what that looks like. Yeah, it's insane. i never seen him scared, I swear. Never. In like any situation? Never. And obviously speaking of fear. The guy was in a coma and um, he got out of the coma, out of the hospital. And the next day he was in the gym training me. Bro, I go give blood and I'm just going <laughs> to pass out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this guy's yeah. like in a coma, gets up nah, like, different, oh, diff- different breed. Yeah, that's man, a different, different, breed. B- different breed. Mad. But that is that is their that is their life though that that is their sole purpose, man. I swear that that someone who is so focused and knows exactly what they want to do, there's no there's no stopping that, mm. is there? Yeah, nothing can get and in what's, the way. And what's sad about it is that you know it's like these guys in Thailand, like they're animals, man. They're like they're not normal, right? In and what sense? They're just different breeds, and Dishes. they're not. And I mean, one championship is. Paying them, but I wish the whole industry changed. You know, with as boxers, I mean, they're getting paid so much, so much money involved in all these sports. And then you see combat sports. Combat sports and me is like real life superheroes. This. This guy, man like Goku. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's true. Like, they're their example of a real life superhero. They can. Never be angry. They help people. They inspire people, and they can beat people up. I mean, what else do you want? But like, what, sorry, but, but, but why? Why do you think that is? You know, they're not getting paid enough, or the the industry isn't being given enough resources to grow. Yeah, and, I mean, and help the fighters. It it's needs more time. Yeah, but obviously, boxing has been around for like centuries. Even though maybe Thai boxing or Muay Thai has been around for longer, it's, it's just. People involved in the sport, I think. That's it's marketing, though, isn't it? Yeah. Like politics, I guess. Money. There's not enough money there. But it's growing. It's I think growing. Pe- I think people give value to something. Like, you know, there's boxers who make, I don't know, 20 million a fight. The best Thai fighter makes, I don't know, I don't know even sure, but not even close to that. You know yeah. what I mean? What's the, like, do you know, like, the most that Thai has fighters ever got paid in, like, one of the biggest, like, say, like, one championship, Thai fighter, final, boom, how much? A Maybe, meal? like... Maybe, yeah, maybe a mil. Kickboxer Muay Thai, higher it makes a mil. That's, that's a it's, it is that's good. 19 million it is jump. really good, but yeah. we're talking about a guy who can whoop all these boxers' ass yeah. in a week. One by one, you know, it's full sport, full contact. But then doesn't MMA obviously give that opportunity for someone from a Muay Thai background to go against someone who's in jiu-jitsu and boxing? Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, MMA doesn't get as paid as boxing. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, boxers. I love boxing. <laughs> I love boxing. And and I 
I would love to have a professional boxing fight one day because I love it so much. Okay. But I just wish it was all fair because mm -hmm. they're all hard, equally hard. Would you branch out to other uh, martial arts or other yes. fighting styles yes. at some point? Yes. Yeah. I okay. do. I do want to test myself, but right now I have a. I want to conquer Muay Thai, mm -hmm. and then. I want to fulfill my dreams, and then when I do that, I want to just see what it's like in other deep waters. Okay. You know, I don't want to just swim in my deep ocean and not and like not test yeah. those waters. Yeah. I want to go in every water. Could you see yourself in maybe like a UFC kind of bout? Why not one championship in America? Okay. They're going to take over. There's better fighters. Um, It's... I'm a bigger fan of one championship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's all the fighters are just better, stronger. And I don't know. It's just, just my opinion, but just know of so many of these guys mm -hmm. and they're just ridiculously not human, you know? And we, we, if you ask him a fighter, how many fights he has, he has like 40 fights. And then you ask a Thai in Thailand, he has like 150 minimum. So how many is that in a year that on average a Thai boxer would have? Or how many do you have every year, for example, on a normal year? Now, now that I'm signed to one, you know, like we have to be careful, you know, like injuries, recovery, taking care of the body, longevity. But before it was every month, every three weeks. Okay. So now uh, post fight, how long is your break between, like, do you get, do you get a break from training after your In fight? In Thailand, you only get seven days. I have seven days of a day off every, every, every fight. So what do you think is like the perfect amount of time in order to recover and prepare for a fight. Like, like, you know, for example, some UFC fighters might have like two months or some boxers, like they start hyping up the fight about like six months before the whole. It depends how big the fight is. I mean, if, it, if, if there's millions of people watching one guy, they're going to have to sell it, right? <clears throat> yeah. They have to get it out there. And um, yeah, it just depends on what we're talking about. Like, obviously, the more money they have behind them the bigger it's going to be the more preparation involved right mm. how how long do you have usually for pre preparation i'm like, always ready bro <laughs> <laughs> always you're ready. born ready i love that you're man. born ready always yeah, ready bro. i swear i'm always ready i always always keep my body in top you can fight shape. tomorrow can fight tonight bro. but, but let, let's say tonight bro. it's your guts but let's say let's say uh you know you've agreed to fight with with someone yeah how long do they give you like they say, okay, the fight's two months, coming up in two months. Two months. Okay. Yeah. And so that's the standard average amount. Of time. Average, average. Do you like watch tape or study the, your opponent to. That's adjust? my team. No, that's my team's job. Okay. Yeah, I'm just. I stay focused. I don't want to. My. This is my personal opinion. I like to see a little bit to know, you know, there's certain guys who has a good right hand. He steps to the left, throws the same move every fight. Yeah. That's. I want to know his basics. But then I don't like watching them too much too. fight other guys. Okay. That's them. Yeah. He's not in there with me. So you want That's them my to you want them to adjust to you, not you adjust to them? No, no, no. no. He's just looking good when he's fighting that guy because he's fighting him. Yeah. I want him to do he he won't be doing the same stuff with me. Okay. So you don't really That's like uh, study a person like religion. You no, I let my trainers do them. So you're just focused no, on No, no, I am obsessed. I do, I do, I am focused. I have I, I mean, visualize like obsessed beat. on like how they fight. I visualize of I visualize beating them, and how just living the fight in my mind. Okay, like you walk play it round by round. Or? Yeah, that's why when I'm there, I'm not scared. I'm just ready. Because think about it: when a fight comes up, my brain automatically goes in the zone. Mm -hmm. I transform right away. I will. I will never like even cheat. When I'm saying cheat, like cheat yourself, I won't basically. even have like a skittle, even if I'm on weight. I'll say to my brain, if you eat that, you're gonna lose a fight. Oh, shit. Mm. Yeah, so I bully myself all day. You don't wanna get up in the morning, you're gonna lose. Go lose. You deserve to lose if you don't run. Don't go in the ice bath, you're gonna lose. So for those two months, I suffer because I'm obsessed and then I'm going crazy. So when I'm there, I feel like, oh, we're here, finally. Imagine Time to calm down, you know? Are, are the weigh-ins like a day before the fight? Yeah, or? day before. 
Okay, and then so after the weigh-in, do you like what's your diet for the next twenty four hours after the after the weigh-in? Same, the same. Um, so for three days before the weigh-ins, usually the the less food, there's less food. Might be water, might be food. So then, after the weigh-ins, you usually have to eat kind of the same food that you were eating during camp. Mm-hmm. That's my way of doing it. Yeah. So you I don't have, go crazy or anything. Yeah, I have my oats in the morning, and I and I and I don't eat lunch. I'm always a bit hungry during a fight. Yeah. Sweet, 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 sweet. sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So you 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 spoke a lot, of obviously, a lot about your team. Uh, so how how many trainers are you do you have in your team right now? Um, two. Okay, and two trainers. And they work on specific things, or yeah. So I'm my Muay Thai coach, and I have my strength and conditioning, which I've been with him now for a year. Um, in Nicosia, shout out to Zodiri Spear. Shout out to Zodiri Spear. He's changing the game in Cyprus. Yeah. Check out his for Instagram. athletes. Um, the guy studied 19 years, has a PhD. I've never worked with a better strength and conditioning trainer yeah. and we have him here in cyprus we'll add his uh, instagram and details at the end yeah of the he's video. a he's a next level coach you know what i mean like that's what i'm saying cyprus is changing it just needs time yeah it's down to us yeah it's down to the new generation definitely and that's that's the kind of responsibility that we have and also that you have yeah. on, on your he, part to he's play. Be, he's playing a big role in my transformation now okay the power I'm, I'm possessing more power than I ever had. And I'm the same weight I was two years ago. So do you have like a nutritionist as well? Yeah, like I have a nutritionist when I'm when a fight signs up. Okay. We go to the nutritionist. We see where the body's at. And then we follow a specific diet to make weight. Mm-hmm. And then to make weight is for every fight, is it different? Like yeah, it's a different, different journey, different phases. There's times, you know, you know. Like different weight classes. Do you know, like. There's 12 months in a year, right? Yeah. And then there's fights, you might be sick. Uh-huh. So you go through harder weight cuts, easier. And then, yeah, there is different. You might fight at 60 kilos. You might fight at 62. Okay, so you have to gain, drop. All the time. So I, I've been lucky enough to obviously see you fight live, which was fantastic. Um, like you made a dream come true for me. To no, be no, it was absolutely unbelievable. But what I think was the best thing about that was that I got to experience the behind the scenes. Yeah. Everyone just sees the fight, like the way in and the, how much you weigh and so forth, but they don't see the grueling process that goes behind. That's why I tell fighters, you know, when someone tells me they want to be a fighter, I tell them, leave the spotlight. Mm-hmm. That's nothing. It's an iceberg. Yeah, that, that's like nothing. Like the, when you're in the nice. ring, I'm like free. I'm there, like, what I've went through to be there. That's a whole different story that no one knows. So, like, you lost around five kilos in one day, is that right? No, two days. In two days, you lost five kilos. I've been trying to lose five kilos for the past six months. Yeah, but it w- <laughs> that, that was water weight. It was water weight. Oh, it was man. five kilos water weight. But just, just, okay, what toll does that have on a body? I mean, I was there, you lost five kilos in two days, and then as soon as you made your way in, you put on, what was it, seven kilos? Um. Uh, yeah, seven kilos. Put seven kilos on in a day. Yeah, D- doesn't that have a toll on the body? Like going like fluctuate. Yeah, you fluctuate. No, so you know, you kind of learn your body. Okay. And you kind of know how to handle these situations, because all the fighters do it. It's not that I just want to lose weight and drop down. I'll fight anyone. The thing is, it won't be fair for me if I fight at the weight I'm walking at. The guy above me is losing 10 kilos to come fight me. Five days is going to be too big. It's going to be unequal. Mm-hmm. And in the future, if I do dominate my category, I'll go up mm-hmm. and I'll challenge myself. You think it's I never to go up? I never want to be, oh, you know, I'm unbeatable. Yes, I am beatable. I am. I'm just trying to become a better fighter, better me, and challenge myself. And if I can overcome... Every challenge. Who's going to stop me then? Is it easier to go upper class or go lower? What do you think is easier to like transition? They're both equally hard. Yeah. Equally hard. Because also the style probably changes. If it all it changes. Not just the weight, obviously. Because it's to put weight on, you have to put muscle on. And then you have to gain speed and yeah, feel it, good at that weight. Wouldn't that slow you down? It does, but you have to get used to it. What 
you're not going to do the same movement you were doing at your weight. When at my weight now, I feel like a king. I dance, I can go forever. If I go up, if I do that with the old guys, I might have to change it up a bit. So you have heavier punches, heavier kicks. Yes, yeah, spice it up a little bit. Yeah. And how long do you think that process will take you in order to get, say for example, now you said you love your weight, right? You're really comfortable, you're dancing around. So say you get to like a you know five uh, kilo higher. No, no, that would be easy for me. Six months transformation. And then another six months transformation, then you'll feel exactly the same way how you feel now yeah. this way. Because I'm born for this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love that. Right. I'm born, I'm born for it. This is some good stuff. <laughs> we talk about? We can cut this bit out anyway. Yeah. Cut. Yes. Woo. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching the show. Little halftime break for you guys. Just a little chance to tell us, uh, tell you guys to follow us on Instagram. Spotify. Spotify. Where else can you follow us? And YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, all the social media platforms. This is Alki and uh, Michael. 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 Uh, Michael. Thanks very much for watching and enjoy the second half of the show. Yes. Stay blessed. Right, amazing. So, you know, most generic question. Do you like music? Like, you know, what kind of music <laughs> you do? Oh, man, I'm a what? big music fan because I listen to it all day in the say. gym. Does music help headphones. you train? Does that help you train? Yes. Do you have like specific genres? Do you listen to like opera or some shit? Um, I listen to <laughs> piano before I fight. Facts. Serious? <laughs> Serious. I was just joking. Yeah, is, it, like, is that to calm you down? Like what's... I listen to... He's an artist called Ludovico. And I just... Yeah, no, no. I just don't want to think about nothing. Okay. You know, I've done all the work. I done. I listen to all my, my motivation music, all my shit. You know We're here ready. now. Yeah. We're here now. Let's dance. Oh. We're here. That's crazy. So you'll be listening to what when you're training? Um. Oh man, I listen. So I grew up. I'm a big fan of Eminem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My all time favorite. Shout out Eminem. I know you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are gonna watch one day, bro. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. So I'm a big Eminem fan. Um. Yes. Listen to him every day. But yeah, just anything with hip hop, bro. Just enjoy hip hop a lot. But I'm open. I enjoy all kinds of music. Um, but I'm a big hip hop fan. Mm -hmm. so that'd be your favorite genre to kind of listen to, but also to work out to. Yeah, and listen and work out because I'm I'm always in the zone, bro. Okay. Even when I'm driving, I'm visualizing. I'm always in. I live in my brain, bro. I live in my own world. They can call it a dream world, but that's where I live. That's your world. Then. I, it's my world. I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. Some people say, you know, like, you know, hey, this guy dreams too big, you know. But that's how I live. That's who I am. And I'm not going to change for anyone, you know. Like, I want to become the best fighter. And I'm, I'm, I'm the one doing it. And then people who saying it, what they doing, you know. Listen, man, you want to dream big. At the end of the day, like, you are number one in Cyprus. Yeah. No, bro, I'm number one in uh, and number one in the world, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I do, uh, I will, I will be, and I just have to prove it. You yeah. know, number one in Cyprus is doesn't I, mean anything, bro. Like maybe to like uh, no, no, I don't, I don't say it because I'm, I'm paving the pathway. Okay, it's we're an island, bro. I'm creating a bridge to mm. other dark. Yeah. yeah, can't be number one here, bro. There's no rankings. There's no rankings. Is there's there no any, there's no competition. Is, is there anyone else in the Cyprus Mai Tai scene coming up? That yeah, there's no. a few boys coming up. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. Like, Do you want to give them a shout out? Yeah. Shout out to the Cyprus team going to the European Championships in IFMA. Um, Muay Thai now is Olympic sports. Fantastic. The nice. boys are going over there to Turkey, not funded by the government. Why? Um, Because they're just dickheads. Fair enough. And I don't mind saying it. I mean, we should definitely get into that a bit more. Nah, we uh, shouldn't. No, it's it's just corrupt. The yeah. whole industry is corrupted yeah. in Cyprus, and um, these guys are just old guys who probably don't even know how to use Google. I have no idea about anything about athletes in general. That's not, crazy. Not 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 Muay Thai only. The importance of sports. Uh, a friend was telling me a girl who plays professional basketball. Gets paid a hundred euros a month. Imagine training every day and getting paid a hundred euros a month to play f basketball. Or you were telling me about um, Komodogi, yeah, the player. Worries. They didn't pay him. It's crazy. That guy's 
That, that, it's, 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 it's your life. That's, that's why we don't go job. forward with sports in this country. But you know what? Yeah. I'm a high believer in karma. What goes around comes around. See, but like you Preach. said, it's down to us to make a change. Where, yeah. How can you change that? I mean, there must be a way. These guys are going to die eventually, just, right? Just Who's going to take just, over just that role? Just believing and just going after and proving these guys wrong and just spreading good energy. Do you, do you feel like if you accomplish enough for them to notice that will make a difference in them, how they see the sport in Cyprus? Like, Look, it's so fun in games. No matter, no, matter what podium, I do, right? no matter what I do, they won't notice it. Hold in on. Cyprus. Hold on, hold on. In Cyprus, fighting is probably considered a... Um, a village sport? I don't know. Like, two guys beating each other up. Yeah, but historically, we've, we've had, like, boxes in that, no? In Cyprus, or... Um, yeah, or we had a few guys, but few boxes never really respected what... To make it to the top. Yeah, like... Globally. They should be more respected. Yeah. Look, I, I, I know, for example, like, Cyprus in itself, it, it, we're on the hype, yeah? Yeah. So if someone goes to Wimbledon, like, when Bagadi's done it, everyone was bloody playing no, tennis. No, no, as fans, we're... We're good. Fans are amazing in Cyprus. Yeah, when we we'll, when we have to group up and stand up, we're good. Cyprus we're is strong. The thing is, when everyone's having a normal day life, how are they gonna know who who the fuck Cyprus is? Doing Muay Thai. Yeah, but you're also increasing the interest of Muay Thai in Cyprus. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but but there's they're not Just they're not promoting it. They're not helping these kids go to Turkey. Give them. They're paid for their tracksuit. Jesus. Like. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's wrong. That is wrong. They're, no, they're paid for. No, sorry. I think they're paying for. No, they didn't pay for the tracksuits, but they have to wear it and give it back because they can't afford to buy tracksuits every year because they're, they're trying to. The Cyprus community is trying to find every way to save money, you know? And imagine, you know, like a tracksuit. When you go over with a national team and you make history in a place like Turkey, you want it as a memory, you know? Yeah, yeah no doubt. They can't keep it. That's They're not getting funded. Where's the money going, you know? Like, and Do you think I tried I tried change it. I met up with the president of, of the sports authority in Cyprus and he promised he was going to even meet up with me to change some stuff and talk. He never called me. And it's sad. It's, I don't care. I don't need them. I'm going to go to the top either way, and all of us are. Yeah. I just wanted to make it easier for these guys yeah. who are going to Turkey. You know, like, help them get over there. Like, I have a friend, my best friend, Sevanos. The boy was working eight hours and training seven hours. Think about it. Shout out, Stefano. Good luck in Turkey as well. The boy was training eight hours a day and training. He cut four kilos last night. Yeah, and, so story. And the only reason we had to cut it yesterday is because he was busy at work. So what if he died yesterday making way? Because he's working. What's going to happen then? Who's going to care? You know what they're going to say? It was our fault. No, it's just... And they they'll, can't, blame, and they'll blame the They can't be professionals in Cyprus. So how do you change that? What I'm saying, well, the reason I mentioned about this before... Just... just is because like is what find I mean. ways to fund fund the the sport. Believe, believe in your athletes in every sport. Don't waste money on stupid stuff. Sport to do sports it takes a lot of willpower. You know you push your body to the limits and beyond. I think the strongest, healthiest mindset and physical condition has to be fighters. I yeah. mean, like they, they've said that a hundred times in all the podcasts that I watch and training videos, fighters have the best physique in the world. Yes. In, in regards of like just general being badasses at, yeah. at what they do. So for the, like, I'm going to go back again. reason I said about Baladis and stuff is like when he got it, there was one Cypriot guy. Everyone went crazy. So everyone started going tennis. I'm yeah, sure legend. Like, you see a whole generation now. Yeah. And then you yeah, see exactly. like maybe a boxer who's Greek see? and goes to that. So if, if you get to like the top, which you already are, do you see them kind of noticing? Is that... Because you made what? enough noise. Yeah, I, but I don't noise. want them to notice anything. I don't, have no, what the, I, I don't have to prove anything to them. I'm already at the top. No, I won a WBC pro- world title. <laughs> no yeah, ever yeah. Cypriot Greek ever won that in history. See, like, yeah. that's crazy. But why don't people know that? Like, or recognize yeah, it. Yeah, because we, like you said, it's the fans that give support. So maybe these fans don't know about it. Because there's no one exposing. 
keep telling them. You okay, know? then this is what we're going to do then, isn't it? Like, by, by all means, like, uh, uh, like maybe this podcast might help even at 1%. Yeah, percent, obviously, but that, obviously but that 1% it will. Obviously it will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, that's why I'm here. But because like you said, but what I'm telling you example, is like, your fans. Yeah, I'm not, I don't want to change it for me. The no, upcoming but, guys. Yeah, for the good of the There's a lot the of guys who have to give up. Stefano told me two days ago, I was like, oh man, you know, if, if, if I don't, if I don't um, move to Thailand, I can't continue doing this sport. And he's right. He can't do it no more. He's tired. You know, the guy has no life. No life. And he's not even going to get paid if he wins a gold. You, you know how, like, obviously you have XM as your sponsor yeah. as well. Do you feel like that could be the route in Cyprus to approach the private companies that can support our athletes in all, in all sports in general but, but then again um well that's not fixing the problem yeah it's, it's not fixing the problem because yeah. even the company you know how many sponsorships can they do to yeah think about it yeah. there's so much stuff to sponsor charity tennis all the sports but where what's the government doing yeah. they put 10 minutes of football on the news every day and one minute of everything else 70% of the population was, watches the news. Does anyone know the Cyprus national teams in Turkey? No. <laughs> I, 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 had used no to I had no idea. Exactly. I had no idea about this. In Turkey, right? We're in war with Turkey. Yeah, it's just See, corrupt. This is what I'm saying. So, What does it take to send Sigma over to their airport to say bye to the athletes? Fucking pump them, you know? Like, get them to the... You know, look where we made it. But you know the funny thing? If they win, or if they win a medal or whatever. If they win, they're, they're just going to... They will become heroes. No, 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 no. All of a sudden. No. No? I won, I won many, sir. Yeah. They're going <laughs> to give you... True. Just going to say, bravo. Bravo, yemu. No, no, no. Bravo, yemu. It means good job, son. Yeah. Not your son. Like, yeah. like you said before, the, the Cypriot people, they're very patriotic. Because, like, I didn't like tennis, and when a Greek Cypriot person went to tennis, all of a sudden, we all went crazy, we all went crazy yeah. for tennis. I don't really like sailing, but when my boy got a, a bronze Good medal, news. the first yeah. ever like Olympian to get, everyone like loved sailing and stuff. So that's when you need to, not you in general, like I, if no, there's no. enough media. It, it is, it is, it is changing. But I, that's what I'm saying is that it's not, I'm changing it as people are, are what, probably wanting to follow their more, they're finding career even more. I'm setting the path for people to go after it. It's possible. Just believe in yourself and luck will find your way. But it's not everyone has the same mental state as me. Yeah. And you don't need to. Yeah, other people might need a bit more of a push or a bit more yeah. help in hand. And it's normal. We're humans. And what my point is, is not even money exposure as i said with the news people but even they just they don't care all they care about is their their fat check at the end of the month mm. it's and energy isn't it? like you said imagine if sigma actually went to the airport uh videoed stefano with the team going for the nationals in turkey like how much more passionate and pride that kid would feel because he knows he's got his whole country yeah you know and when yeah. he comes back and he wins a gold even if he doesn't get money, even if there's no money in the government. That's just love. Let's say we're broke it. as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say we are. But that will help. How much would yeah. that help so much? Imagine going, he'll go to a coffee and be like, hey, bravo for the gold medal. Yeah, look, You're the man. Listen, it's nice to be when he goes to the gym. for what you do. When yes. he goes to the gym, I recognize for your he's going to train yeah. harder. Yeah. He's going to push harder. Of course he does. And then he's going to become even better. Look, everyone needs motivation. I'm not saying like, obviously it comes from we within. All, you know, but people that, that, say, that people say, Oh, yeah, you know, I love being alone. Oh, blah, blah. No, you don't. Everyone has people around them. You got your boys. I got my boys. You have a best friend. There's a reason he's your best friend. You know, you can't just go live in the mountain alone now. You're not going to be truly happy. You can't make it alone, man. You're going to be calm, but you can't make it. It's a team makes the dream work. Yeah, and it's just in our nature. People need people. That's yeah. why there used to be tribes. We're tribal. Yeah, we're tribal. Yeah. And Cypriots are, because we're small. Mm. We have the power to do it. We're just a big wave, a million population that it, that can shake the world if you want to. We can. 
we're passionate people. We're strong, and that's the thing. Like we always I, find a way. Yeah, I, I love the fact there's that there's a we nine. Are year, there's back. a nine year old kid now. Stay yo. He hits harder than a twelve year old. <laughs> like he's the fucking future now. Like, what's gonna happen to him if he grows up seventeen, finds out he has to work as a making coffee for ten hours to do his sport? How long can he last? If no one guides him, guides him. Let's say I wasn't around. What was going to happen? Yeah. But that's the thing, like, you've got enough responsibility on your head as it is. You're training for fights, up and coming fights. We'll talk about that soon as well. And everything else that like, you got to do. And then how can, like, it's too much for you to focus on this as well. Do you know what I mean? That, but someone has to do it, you know, so I, I will. Yeah. So I naturally am willing. you feel the responsibilities come to you. Yeah, I'm w I am willing to help as much as I can. An individual who's ready to proceed. Do you think that'll be like one of your future goals to come back and make sure that you can help as much as possible? Yes. And to kind of take your experience, yes, your earnings. As the, Cypriots, we have a few killers, bro. Damn. Nice. That's and the, blood. like a few guys, like they can make it with the right guidance, with the right knowledge. So yeah, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to do it. So when uh, when's your next fight, Michael? Well, what um, are we going to look forward to? What can we tell the fans listening and to everyone around? I can't really announce my oh. fights. I am. Okay. Yeah, it's always um, in my contracts with One Championship is always um, they have to announce first mm -hmm. and then I'm allowed to announce. But can you say like how long or when? Yeah, so happening? I'll be back in the ring in April. Nice. That's soon. Yeah, end of April probably. Um, I'm going to start fighting back in the Thai National League. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, I want to become a Thai champion like when uh the Lumpini belt my dream and since a kid and then yeah that's what I'm gonna go after I'm gonna go back and get back to work and just it's grand fight yeah so you're moving back to Thailand for the next you know I don't know how foreseeable long. future how yeah. long it takes yeah. you know I was thinking to like didn't I didn't think about it I was like to like not stay as long but now I'm I'm I'm, I'm hungrier again. Mm -hmm. I'm coming for it all this time, and I'm gonna stay until I get it all. You know, you just been an animal in a cage, and that cage just been open, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I and I and I can come back in, and I'm comfortable with my cage. I like my cage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like you it. make anywhere your home, right? I pick lock every day, <laughs> <laughs> so you control whether you go out or in, right? Yeah, and I don't want to go out. That's the thing. I can go out, but I don't want. To. I just want to stay there. A hybrid hibernation and then just when it's time i'm gonna and when i'm when the spotlight's on me i'm gonna run through all the division so anyone listening right now who wants to follow this sport yeah like what's the one main thing that you think they need to focus on self-discipline self-discipline the hardest like get up do everything you dislike running i hate running I hate it. I've been running every day for I don't know how long. You still hate it? Yeah, man. I discuss. It's <laughs> <laughs> imagine running 12 kilometers every day, bro. Yeah, I wouldn't. One hour. But, but getting, like, doing it for so many years, don't you get used to it and you sort of nah, end up never, loving it? Never. Or? No. So just be disciplined. Be in the gym. Show up. Give 100%. Don't lie to yourself. If this is what you want to do, you're going to do it. If you don't, go find what you love. Don't waste your time. Like, say that to everyone. Say that to Stefano too. Like, when he said that to me the other day, I said, bro, if this is what you want to do, you're going to do it. I said to him yesterday night, to me, oh, we're going to make way. To him, of course we are, man. Two hours, we're going to be on way. Two hours, we're on way. And because he wanted to. And it's, if you want to do something, you're going to do it, you know, no matter the obstacle. So... Just being disciplined. There's, def just there's definitely sacrifice in that. Obviously, you have to sacrifice a few things in order to get to where you want to. Yeah. So you can't live ordinary and expect extraordinary things. Exactly. Yeah. You said it. And there's, there's no shortcuts. No. No shortcuts. You can't waste time either. The thing I learned in Cyprus, you have to zone out, bit hustle all day. Like there's no time for breaks. Like, Sunday is just like, there's no time to even go out. Like, I went out the other day, 
and I only had one glass of red wine, and and I was like, I went out because you know I had to see some friends. It was a long time. You need that though every now and then, man. You do, but you need to plug out. Yeah, but that's it. Like once every now and then. What was the last time you went out? Um, the other day. Not I me, mean like before that. Um, oh man, two three months. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, I think that's a good enough break. And before the fight, I was training six months for that fight. Damn. I didn't go out for six months. Just home. I mean, when I say I didn't go out, I just was always either resting, preparing for training, or grocery shopping to buy my my healthy food. I like had to do something with my job. The, always. The, the, does that ever get frustrating? Like doing six months same regime. Day, no. in, day in, day out. No, because we don't even think of it that way. No, because I'm thinking like when I'm 30, I'm going to be able to like look back and say I put in the work, mm. and I'm here now. Mm. I deserve to drive this car. I'm going to have live. My mom's going to be settled down. Have the house I'm going to want. My friends are going to be happy. All of us doing what we love. I'm I'm pushing my friends, everyone to like go after their dreams. Yeah. I don't want to be sitting at the top, and my friends not happy. We yeah. we, we I shout we at my to make it, man. yeah I I shout at my friends every day. I shout at them like I won't speak to them for two months if they're bullshitting around, if they're partying and they're like out fucking around. Like get out, get out of my life, bro. When you find your way, come back. Like I don't want to be around bullshit. You know, like time want, wasters. Yeah, just that's a difficult thing to do in itself. If you know, like, you, like my dad would say to me, like, surround yourself around good people and you'll be a good person. If you surround yourself by bums all day, you can be a bum. If you surround yourself by someone it's that's energy, hard working, though. Yeah, it's, it's is energy. That transfer of energy. Mm -hmm. is it, isn't it difficult, though, to kind of, like, tell that person to kind of, like, fuck off? And check out and not see them for a few well, months. Well, my best friends, I don't mind. Because mm. we're best friends for a reason, right? Like, no doubt. And you can friend, always be real with them. Yeah, but, like, they know I'm going to make it. They see it. They know me. All of them kind of predict the future. They believe in me too. Like, they believe I'm unbeatable. Like, just because they see what superhuman stuff I do. So, I love them to death. So, that's why I, I shout out them. So, we're all at the top, you know? Like you don't want to rush. be up there alone, man. No. no. Nah, it's lonely on the top, they say. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. It doesn't not. have to be that way, yeah. No. It's but why, why, why can't we all be happy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I want to come back to Cyprus, and if you, even if I, I'm sad, I'm not gonna be able to be around. You know, when he opens the shop, but we're like when I come back, I want to like know that fuck. When I walk into his new fucking shop, I'm gonna park out. We're both happy. We're yeah. both doing. We're both. You know, both we're on a mission. Successful right? in your we're, own fields. We're both yeah. where we want to be in life. Yeah. Example. Yeah. That's what I want. Definitely amazing. Like. Yeah, you're, you're an inspiration, man. That's what I mean. It's a shame that we can't get across to more people and not only to find out about the sport, but just to find out what it takes to kind of be in the position that you're in and the feelings that you went through and the hardship because that's motivation in itself. Yeah. So like you being, when I, when I said before, like there's a the lot, best there, Don't get me wrong. I, I am human, right? I do have emotions. I do cry. I do, I do feel pain. Just like everyone, like you. It's just, I always like, trigger my brain, reminding him what we're doing. You know, like you're in this ice bath because you have to recover to perform because you're going to fight that guy. And he's dangerous. You have to be ready, you know. You're going to be locked in the cage with a killer. Just shut up and get over with it. So you find the reason and everything. Yeah, yeah, There's, yeah, a, there's every a point, time. there's a method in the madness, madness in the method. Yeah, when I'm sad, I always say like, you know, you know, like in three, four days, you're gonna feel better and just I always just soldier through it. Adapt and overcome, yeah. And it's it's fine to go through those motions, man. Yeah, those yeah. Motions, yeah. You, you have to. Yeah, exactly. That's the human there. side, yeah. Like, yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? That's what makes you stronger. Yeah. Yeah. And anything these, else. These things can't be ignored, man. No, of course not. But then again, like the I still I still find it amazing. Like just your mindset based on your age and everything else. Yeah. So how do you get that across to someone who is going through like, uh, could you relate that to someone who's going through like depression or someone that really doesn't see the light at the end of yeah. the tunnel? Yeah, uh, because, you know, we all, we all have a different life and there's a lot of stuff you don't know about people. You know, like you might get bothered about something 
that to me means nothing. Mm. So like, I always try to, I always say like, if you're not in their shoes, you can't understand. Yeah. Because there's always so many perspectives. But as long as there's no ego, we can all help. So talk about ego, like for your Instagram, your social media, right? Yeah. Um, like how many people like view your stories or like do you feel like there's more pressure the more followers you get or what? I mean, I get up to like 30,000 story views, 40,000, 50,000, um, maybe 100,000 sometimes or million accounts reach and stuff. I That's mean, crazy numbers. it's crazy, crazy numbers, but I just, I'm happy I'm giving the right thing out there. Mm. Like, my work is talking. I'm not talking. Yeah. I'm not there's nothing to prove. My work says it all, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just hope people see me and get inspired instead of being jealous. Yeah. Like I'm never jealous of anyone. Like people say, Oh, you know, McGregor, fuck McGregor. I'm inspired, man. Like I'm inspired by Jake Paul, I'm inspired by everyone. Man. I'm inspired by you, you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Every single person I learn. Even if it's a tiny thing, I put it into my character. Because that's quality. Yeah, you, yeah. You see, so basically, you see the best in every single person. Yeah, yeah. We've like, all made mistakes yeah, and yeah. so forth. But to, to, motivate, oh, to be motivated by everyone. Everybody. Yeah. Like, every, I swear everything. Yeah, but then again, a lot of people can see that. Like you, you Obviously, you see small things and details. Like When you think of Logan Paul, I think of like, oh, this guy who took a picture of a dead guy. But obviously, you don't see it like that. You think someone has been like making money, has hustled, made videos Came on a podcast. Nothing. Like, Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the dead body thing, all right. I mean, it is. It's a bit much, yeah. There is stupidity. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know them. But like, they... Like, Jake Paul and Logan, like, everyone hates them, example. But you're bringing more eyes to the sport. Mm. More money. Yeah. More money for everyone. You know. I think their podcasts are great. Daniel actually. said yeah, to me this day, Daniel, he said, and it's it's in my mind now, like, every day. Because I'm going to London to do some seminars. And he was like, you know, we're 8 billion. We can all have a share in the pie. Mm. You know what I mean? There's enough for everyone. There's enough for everyone. Yeah. So, like, it's true. So, like, I just respect everyone. Like, Jake. Yeah, man. He's up there for a reason. Mm -hmm. We'll never know why. Why why him and not me? I don't know. Time will tell, right? Time reveals everything. Mm -hmm. So, I just take everything from everybody, bro. Damn. Whoa. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> this has been like, amazing. Yeah, it has. Like, um... But most things that we wanted to kind of touch up on we have I believe um, we just wanted to be really excited to get you on the show yeah and obviously this is our first ever episode and to have you on has been like a, an amazing experience yeah, I can't thank say you. thank you for coming yeah today. man thank, thank you guys too it's by cool. when, I, when, I, when I mentioned before about your number one in Cyprus I don't, number, don't, I don't mean like you're the best in Cyprus I just mean like you're number one for us, bro. Like oh, we, yeah. Like we, we look up to you, your inspiration. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. You know, we are a very patriotic yep. uh, country in itself. So whenever we see one of our boys up there, we, we're with you, man. Like, I don't yeah. like Every single person. Seeing the Cypress flag up there, man. Is every single person that talks to me about you, man, they, they're showing passion and Yeah, love. yeah. That's what, you know what? And that's, that's amazing, why. man. Now, now, like, I'm growing week by week mm. and becoming more known. And like, I haven't been fight in two years. I don't want to fight due to COVID and injuries, and you know. But in, on Thursday, I'm se I'm 23 years old, so I'm not in a rush. I'm I'm just patience. I'm enjoying the new transformation, and I'm ready now to show all the guys who believe in me. Like I'll do it. Just like I'm like just the train. Me. The train is going, and we're all on it together. Whoever jumps off is their loss. Yeah, that's life, man. People get on and off your carriage. Yeah, yeah exactly. Some people stay on, some people leave. That's and those who get off, I, I don't wish them any bad. But the ones that stay on, yeah, appreciate yeah, them I always. Love them, yeah, yeah, of course. Cool, man. Awesome. Oh, what about like um, just something random? So like, I have some questions about it. Like your clothes. Yeah, you know what I mean. You like clothing. You like makes. Do you give a shit about Gucci and Prada and shit, or are you just like a, a polo top, some khaki bottoms kind of style guy? Uh, man, yeah, I do. I mean. I whatever anyone will tell me is like clothes kind of gives you the first impression of someone. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't have to be a brand. So you like fashion, yeah? Yeah, I do, I do. You're into fashion. I'm into fashion. No doubt. I love sneakers, I love fashion. 
I'm not really. I do. I do. I do like some brands, but mm. I don't really think about it that way. If I like something, I'll get it. it doesn't have to be whatever brand it is. Even if it's Gucci, yeah. if I want that, I'll get it. If it's that, if it's Zara, I'll get it. I just want to look good and feel good feel in my fresh. temple. This mm. is my temple. I'm a machine, and I and I dress it with style because I deserve it. You know this. This represents comes something from my character. Mm. Your style too. Your style too. You don't just wear anything. Mm -hmm. One more thing I wanted to kind of focus on, like, is your tattoos. Yes. Okay. So just give us a little insight on like why you got them. Are they still called tattoos in Thailand? The meaning they're behind a, it. They're called Sang Yans. So um, Muay Thai is way back, like way back. We're talking two and a half thousand years ago. Wow. So yeah, before the warriors you still do war i'm talking you know swords muay thai used to be there you know so muay thai started as a festival the kings used to um get their the best warrior in every village they used to train they used to um wrap rope around their arms and they used to fight till death what? yeah and the, it would be like a festival for the king to see who will be his bodyguard, let's say. Damn. Yeah, so the best fighter would always win. And before war, um, they would um, go to the monks. They're very spiritual people. I wouldn't call them religious. They're spiritual. Thais. They're not religious. Spiritual. They go to the temples. And before they, used to, before they went to war, they used to go to the monk. And the monk used to choose a tattoo for them. So each tattoo, Sangyan, has a meaning. Wow. Yeah, and I and I, I wanted a Sangyan when I was 11 years old. I was in Lumpini as a fighter. I was like, wow, that looks sick. <laughs> and I want that. <laughs> and then at 15 years old, I was like, mom, you know what? I'm getting a tattoo. I'm sorry. Like, And she was like, yeah, go for it. So what's your first tattoo? What, what was the meaning behind it? What does it mean? The, the circle. Yeah. The circle means protection from every angle, angle of the universe. Yeah. Of the universe. Front, back, right, left. It's like protection around. And have you visited these temples? Yeah. Or, yeah. Of course. Awesome. Do yeah. you go there often or? Was no, no. I, uh, there's many temples in Thailand. I yeah. just visit. It's a kind of like a, whenever I have time, I visit with the Thais. Mm -hmm. Like before fights, I pray to their God, let's say. But I don't, you know, it's the same God as everyone. I just, yeah. I like living it to the max. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I um do their New Year's. I, I'm I'm with them. You're yeah. you're one hundred percent in their culture. Yeah, I'm a hundred percent with them. Amazing. And what's your other tattoos mean? Uh, the one on top is like, it's basically just, it's like a temple, let's say, but it's it's the start of your art on your back. It's like the first one. You kind of make your way down. Yeah, and then you mm -hmm. start. And maybe I might get more, but it's painful. Yeah, the, the, are all your tattoos done with bamboo. Yeah, they're very painful. Like and it hurts a lot. And that's why I didn't get another one. <laughs> it's a lot of pain. It takes a lot longer as well, right? Yeah. And it was painful to me and I was skinny back then too. I was 16 year old and 15 year old little bony guy getting fucking bamboo <laughs> thinking I'm a man, how, but I wanted long, to cry. How many hours did it take? Oh man, three hours, I think. Three, four hours. Just whacking the shit out of you with the bamboo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like your longest tattoo ever is like three hours. Yeah, I think. Damn. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we, we did it. <laughs> I remember, like, uh, I said, like, after watching your fight, I'm gonna get a, a, a tattoo as well, and that's still gonna happen. Yeah, and, um, definitely, you gotta choose one for me, and I'll get it done 100. Uh, yeah, that's for the love. That's for the love. And uh, cool, man. Anything else you want to shout out? Do you want to shout out to anybody before we end the podcast? You want to say thanks to anyone or anyone that's kind of coming up right now, or this is your time to shine, man. Um, just. Thank you everybody for following me and um it's you haven't seen nothing yet. Like <laughs> we're coming hard this year and I promise oh like nothing's gonna stop me. Like the vision's there and then just keep tuning in and I promise only action guys. Only action, yeah. Yeah. Can't wait, man. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I got no doubt in my mind that you know you're gonna be on the top, and you already are in like our hearts and our heads. Like you got the whole country behind you, yeah. And not only from Cyprus, I know you got followers around the world. Like I said, being at your fight was amazing because I I I, I couldn't. I didn't actually understand like how big you were in this industry, but when seeing you in in your bubble and yeah, like people yeah, coming up to you, like signing autographs and like taking pictures, that's a great feeling in itself. And for me to actually witness that was crazy, and I can't wait to see that on a times eleven thousand scale. Yeah, you know, like it's over nine thousand. The potential that you have, and it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very having much. your no. show. Thank you, you so too, much man. for being here, it. and just knowing you on a personal level. Um, we're always gonna be behind you, uh, supporting you. Um, and we're gonna do part two. Yeah, no after doubt. After take over, we're looking forward to part two, no doubt. Uh, like I said, massive shout out to uh, Thai, uh, Thailand, beautiful country. Massive shout out to your sport, to your mumsy, to your family, to yeah. your trainers, to your sponsors. Uh, we thank you for being the person that you are, and everything that you brought, and the passion that you brought to us uh, as an individual. Thank, thank you, you man. guys. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming by today and we look forward to seeing everything you're going to accomplish in the next couple of years and uh, we'll see you soon in Cyprus. Definitely, yeah, bro. Big up. Team. Big up yourself, Peace. man. Yeah. Big up yourself. That was cool, right? Yeah, that was wicked. Love and advice, man, honestly. <laughs> it's really easy to talk to you. <laughs> it's been on a different level. Yeah. That's been Island Project, episode one. And if you don't know, get to know. Uh, follow us on uh, gonna have all the social media it's gonna be on Instagram it's gonna be on where YouTube everywhere be on YouTube. everywhere it's gonna be on where Spotify Spotify it's gonna be on where Apple Podcasts Apple Podcasts <laughs> it's gonna be on where Google Podcasts it's gonna be in your mama's house <laughs> in your grandma's house uh, yeah don't forget we'll follow our social tune media in, tune in definitely thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in we love you this is Island Project this is Mike and Alki out Woo! stay blessed yeah. Oh. Let's go, man. Episode one. Oh. Yeah. Big up yourself. <laughs> <laughs>